All right, guys, Bill M here back with a new video. And in this video, back talking about the challenge once again, here doing a review of the latest season challenge battle for a new champion, which on the offset, I was actually kind of excited for this season. I think it was an interesting concept to see new blood being added to the show and seeing the show trying to create these new staples that I think worked to a degree. I think there are definitely a few people from this season that I do hope to become mainstays moving forward. Though as a whole, I do feel like the season still came off as largely mediocre, kind of like most recent challenge seasons. I do feel like this is a season that still provided a lot of drama. I still feel like this is a season that did have some pretty good moments, yet I still come out of it just feeling like it was just fine. And I do think a large reason for that is the show's format. I do think the format of this season was just all over the place. And mixing that in with the fact that there was still this big majority alliance that essentially ran the entire season it does lead to this still being a somewhat lackluster season in the grand scheme of the challenge but i think it's one that i probably liked more than the last couple main series seasons so i mean at least there's that i guess but anyway like my other reviews i'll be running through the season from beginning to end talking about my thoughts along the way so let's start off with episode zero because that's the thing the challenge does all the time now where we start all off with an mtv crib style sequence of tj showing off his gym which was weird but anyway we learned that this season's gonna be comprising of the next generation of competitors all being returning players from previous seasons of the challenge though containing no winners which again i think is an interesting concept here again i do think the main series of the challenge has gotten really stale recently with the same people coming back all the time same people doing well all the time and it felt like the show was kind of just throwing away all these newbies that were being added from season to season in favor of just bringing back the same vets i think to give those newbies that weren't being brought back a chance here to make a name for themselves i thought was an interesting concept and again i do think it kind of worked for a few members of this cast though i think there's others that just simply come off as fodder but anyway here we have tj calling the cast and telling them that they're on which just felt very scripted to which along the way we do see mariah being there of bananas which i wonder if that'll be relevant later on but anyway we also learned that this season will be divided into three different phases the control phase the chaos phase and the conquest phase which the show really hypes up as this like big game changer even though it's just kind of more of the same anyway eventually the players do arrive at the arena which has a challenge there though tj is nowhere in sight which plays into this initial control phase where it has the players having to work as a team which is kind of boring where every daily from this point forward is one where the players will be participating to win money for their prize pot while no other game ramifications come from it there's no immunity doled out there's simply just them winning money which i don't care about and it's weird because like obviously this is something that essentially the traders does and it's like one of the most criticized things about the traders how boring the challenges are because there's no stakes to it and for some reason the challenge decided to copy that like literally the worst thing Thing about the traders like it's a very strange concept to me but either way this first challenge here ends up being kind of humorous in the sense that everyone is just standing there waiting for tj to show up only for tj to obviously never show up and we have the cast just literally standing there for half an hour as the crew just stares at them waiting for them to do something which was funny but anyway we then get introduced to kylan who gets introduced as this massive super fan of the challenge being more prepared than anyone else and he's the person that figure out what's going on here but the challenge itself has them unlocking supplies and finding cots to where they realize they had to sleep out there to which the rest of the episode ends up essentially just being us getting set up to relationships which is obviously kind of the point of this episode but we do see them finding alcohol the which big t does the speech here with big t somehow being the most experienced person on this cast which is kind of weird to think about but anyway we get set up of her relationship with melissa with them being these massive underdogs on this season meanwhile melissa gets to talk a lot about her kid to which we do see her bonding with Asaf, who's also a parent. The through this season, Asaf ends up playing as a double agent for his alliance, then really just playing Melissa for most of it. Meanwhile, we also get set up to the Asaf J alliance, to which I guess they're like best friends outside the show and make music together, which I will say I've looked up their music and it is very cringy. But we also here get set up to their relationships with Michelle and Narice. And really, Jay and Michelle come in really well connected on this season, to where it really felt like they could completely just run their show from beginning to end and i mean they kind of do to a degree but i think jay in particular ends up playing this way sloppier than he really needed to, to where he probably could have had a bit of an easier ride but anyway 
they end up essentially holding together this majority alliance that really connects the ride or die alumni with the spies lies and allies alumni it really ends up being the majority for most of the season but here we also get set up from chauncey talking about amber just having their baby and he's there to win money for the family which i will say i do find it weird that chauncey was even on this season and the fact that he literally left for this season immediately after amber gave birth and even in the pre-season interviews we see amber still being pregnant which is strange that he left so soon afterwards though again i guess to each their own but right away we do see chauncey not being included in this big majority alliance which supposedly stemmed from pregame where supposedly he got caught trying to target some of the ride or die women that left him on the outs though really this felt like obvious setup to him being on the bottom of his group meanwhile we also get content around callum and michelle who start flirting to which their relationship ends up being really focused on early on the season even though i found it largely boring though callum does come into this with a girlfriend which in itself did feel reminiscent of old school challenge anyway this season does end up containing a lot of international competitors most of which stemming from the spin-offs which i mean felt like at least some use for those shows considering we're probably never gonna see continuations of them but through that it does end up creating this pretty big divide in the house where these international competitors end up being on the bottom for most of their runs with that we do end up seeing jessica really take the forefront in seemingly leading this charge against the ride or die crew being the real reason why she ends up being targeted by the following episode though it's very strange that this isn't really propped up as that by that point to where it seems like the show tries to create other excuses for her elimination which just makes it weird that they're not just showing what actually happened when they did show what happened in episode zero but either way with that we get to episode one where tj arrives in the morning reveals the format of the show revealing that the season will only have one winner which I think is really lame. I mean, while the show, again, tried to keep it somewhat balanced and having these challenges that would not greatly favor one gender over the other, I still think it is kind of lame to end this season of only one winner. Now, to be fair, it is called Battle for a New Champion, but I do feel like considering the fact that this season was essentially done to spur on this new generation of the challenge and through that, you would think you would want there to be newer champions. Like, you would think you would want multiple champions champions on this season but i guess that's not the way they thought about it but anyway the prize ends up being revealed as three hundred thousand dollars to which they'll have to increase it themselves to five hundred thousand which again the way they do that is through working together and challenges here which is just boring but again for me the control phase here really just did not fully work for me i do feel like it's a format that just led to the first half of the episode being really stale just due to the fact that again who cares about how much money they make well beyond that the later format of the entire house voting for one person to go into elimination largely just led to a lot of group think and just voting in this like big consensus target which was also not particularly interesting but the daily itself here does end up having them having to transfer polls through course and put together this puzzle at the end to which we get a soft getting this pretty humorous confessional where he tries to recite the phrase teamwork makes the dream work but just can't remember the phrase which in a way does also feel kind of weird in the sense that obviously it's taking advantage of these people who who don't have English as their first language and turning that into humor which again it's probably not a great look realistically but again it was a little funny confessional but anyway Kieran ends up really taking the leadership role here which is strange considering he's literally only been on one challenge before while we have other people that are more experienced but anyway here we do have Berna getting really annoyed at the fact that no one's listening to her to which who would have guessed that Berna would be really emotional in the game but anyway the challenge itself ends up being a complete disaster here with the women being relegated to the puzzle all oh, the men kind of take forever to even get to the puzzle which leads to them not being particularly close by the end of it first failure and challenges obviously continues to the following episode as well though here we have the players finally arriving at the house there's Berna is once again annoyed though this time at the fact that Michelle's not in her room because I guess that's a thing that matters I guess Berna and Michelle are super close which kind of comes out of nowhere also we get set up of her relationship with Huey to where they get into a bit of a fight when he tries to console her but through this we do see Michelle eventually talking her down and talking about having to keep her safe in the game to which obviously michelle again being the one that was essentially running the game puts the target on the people that she hasn't worked with in the past to which the initial target did seem to be melissa to weaken big t which doesn't end up going through here meanwhile we didn't see the big t side of things where she talks about feeling like she's playing a west style game and we see her telling other people that she doesn't have a master plan only first to then cut to her talking to melissa where she says she has a master plan which that master plan is to target the men which 
doesn't seem like that much of a master plan, but that is something I will mention here. The fact that I, that's another thing of this format I don't particularly love is that it felt like production just allowed them to vote in whoever they wanted. Now, they do kind of change that by episode four, but it does feel like that's the case to where through that, it gave the players themselves the decision on which gender to vote down. And through that, it did lead to what kind of felt like misogyny here and the men looking at all the women as the weakest players and wanting to vote them in which again was also not a particularly good look here but here the target does seem to be between big t and berna only for us to see the ride or die women getting together and talk about voting for jess as she wants to get the stronger girls out again a minor continuation of what happened in the previous episode only for that concept to not really be brought up again as we get to deliberation where straight up i do find it funny that we got the deliberation before the actual voting process actually got formally announced though here we do see jessica saying that she's heard her name though she then proceeds needs to admit that there are going to be some challenges that she's not going to be good at and that she knows she has a slim chance of being the champion but wants to help someone else win which really gets propped up as like her completely blowing her game and this being the reason why she gets voted in like big t saying she's digging a hole for herself and the show trying to make it seem like she was targeted due to the fact that she was weak which again maybe played a minor factor but 100 the main reason she was targeted is because she was seen as this opposition for the majority alliance but anyway we do get to the arena where we find out how they're going to be voted in and that is through a public vote where they vote in a line and can see how everyone else voted which is not interesting and again it's dumb as it really just allows the people that are later in the line to change their votes based on how previous people voted which is just an unfair advantage for people that are later in the voting to where i really hated that aspect of it and again it just further adds to groupthink, where some people are just going to wait to see what the majority is going to vote for and then vote alongside that which is just again boring to where here we do see literally everyone vote for jessica including jessica outside of horacio who is last and decides to vote for big t which was really stupid it's funny how like again this is a format that essentially incentivizes people to all vote the same and to just follow the previous vote yet horacio again being last decides to not do that and just put a target on his back by voting for big t which is just again ridiculous but anyway we learned the other aspect of the format which again i think at least balances it out a little bit and the fact that the person voted in gets to pick who they go into elimination with again at least giving an opportunity for that voted in person to pick someone from the majority but instead jessica picks big t which was not that interesting here obviously thinking that big t was the weakest competitor on the board which i mean to be fair despite how much the show tries to prop up big t's transformation on this season i think it's probably still in that pick here though the challenge itself ends up being kind of a lame one of them being in these cages above the arena and essentially have to do a tug of war to get this hammer that they use to break the floor and again it was just boring and done super quick so big t wins the challenge here to where again they really hype her up even though again it was a super lame challenge but with that we do lose jessica who is someone that i came out of au thinking that there was potential jessica i thought jessica came off as a pretty good competitor there she also was a big fan of the game and did seem to have a lot of allies there to where and i thought there was some potential there jessica obviously on this season we didn't see any of that and to be fair we might have just not seen it in the edit as again it did feel like she was blatantly coming after the ride or die women and through that and seemed to be playing hard though really outside that i don't feel like we really got much of her on this season to where i would not be shocked if we just never really see her again with that we get to episode two where right away we do see jay and chauncey talking about looking out for each other which makes it clear that they're not going to be looking out for each other though this is where we do get the introduction to the u.s alliance where supposedly the people from the united states are working together and we get this u.s versus international team being set up which again is portrayed genuinely here despite the fact that i felt like this was very clearly just a cover for what was really going on in the game which is this ride or die slash spies lies and allies alliance essentially just targeting the outsiders where and they are working alongside the likes of like a berna colleen and emmanuel which makes the overall notion a bit strange and felt like a disingenuous aspect of the early portions of the season but through this we also get the setup that they're not working with chauncey which makes it again clear that chauncey's probably gonna go home this episode but again it's funny how they just never explain why he's not in the majority alliance like they keep on talking about how he's not included in the group but never go into 
into the reasons why, which again, do come from pregame, but it's not like they've been unwilling to show pregame stuff in the past, so I don't get why they didn't show it here, but anyway, we get to the daily, which has them transferring balls from the water to a tube on the top of a platform, to which they have to climb a rope and climb over each other to get to it, and this was just kind of a boring challenge, but also a seemingly really difficult one here to where, again, it ends up being a complete disaster once again, where we get a lot of arguing within the group, and we see some terrible strategy here for like Olivia being placed at the bottom of the rope to where people have to climb over her, which seemed misguided, but we do see Chauncey struggling on the rope climb as well, which again, the show tries to act as this is the reason why he's being targeted, when I, obviously that was not really the case. Now back at the house, we do end up seeing the start of the Kylan-Melissa relationship, where this leads to some drama later on in the episode, where Melissa wants Kylan to kiss her in public, only for him to turn her down, and she's humiliated, to which just leads to Kylan revealing his autism to her, which all this was just a little bit strange. Though again, nice representation there for Kylan to get to talk about that on the show. But anyway, we do get a lot of setup here to Huey being the target for the episode, with a lot of him getting a lot of personal content as well, talking about his gypsy background, him talking about wanting to be a father, though it doesn't really go anywhere here, as obviously Chauncey ends up getting voted in instead, where again, we get to deliberation, where where Chauncey, once again, gets shown as him blowing up his game in this spot, where we see him, like, asking Horacio if he's done him any wrong, only for Horacio to say that you did say my name last season, or it ends up backfiring on him. But anyway, here we also get set up to Raven being close to Chauncey, and wanting to save him, and mixing down the fact that she's also close to Kieran, who increases his plan with Kieran to burn votes under the case that the person dragged into the eliminations is that that person has to be someone that had voted for you which, which I mean they've done in the past and to be fair I actually would have liked that to be an aspect of this season though it doesn't end up being a thing but again it did seem like it was a thing for this episode as we do see again the British men burning their votes in this instance though again it doesn't really end up working out for him anyway. But again, this leaking of information from Raven here ends up putting a massive target on her back to where the Ride or Die women end up looking at her as the bottom of their alliance, and obviously this does set up her being a target for them in the following episode. But we then get to the elimination where Chauncey gets voted in to where he, again, votes for himself, which again is the optimal move in a spot where you're already going in as you, why burn other bridges. But, but again, it's just funny that that's what happens in this initial format of the game. But anyway, here we do see Chauncey picking James for some reason not really properly explained on the show here though we do see him talk about wanting to regain trust with the u.s alliance which to be fair is probably the correct call i mean considering what other path does he have in the game and that alliance really has the numbers by significant margin the where targeting james probably one of the less fit people not working with that majority alliance again does make sense the challenge here ends up being a pretty physical one a lot of running back and forth where we have the transfer these light cylinders to plug holes in the wall and create rows of three which again does have this mental aspect to it as well where obviously chauncey does outperform james in the physical portion only for james to somehow beat him mentally which is kind of sad considering james isn't the brightest bulb in the bunch either to which james ends up winning the challenge here despite being completely exhausted which finally ends up really lessening his threat level moving forward to where despite him never being in the numbers for really the rest of his run on the season he simply isn't targeted because he's not really a threat to anybody because they know he can't win a final but again with that we lose chauncey who it was a bit of a mess on this season i mean he didn't really seem to have much of a chance it seemed like pregame really tarnished his reputation coming into it to where no one really wanted to work with him here and through that again he didn't really seem to have much potential on this season i mean entertainment wise i probably found him more interesting on this season than i did the first time around where really i found him kind of boring there and here at least he was a little bit more chaotic though really at the end of the day again chauncey's not someone i'm looking at particularly highly and not someone i'm dying to see play again but then we get to episode three where right away we do focus a lot on the mariah and james relationship which through this the show sets it up as mariah essentially cheating on bananas which again felt like kind of mess that you would expect from earlier seasons of the challenge but also just feels like kind of a weird situation where again mariah and bananas weren't really dating anyway here we also end up seeing horacio flirting with hui hui who straight up before i started working on this review i kind of forgot she was even on this season but their relationship ends up getting a lot of focus here with who he talking about how he helps her struggle through the language barrier which too fair I, I think is a massive problem for who on this season and really in world championship as well the where it does feel like a pretty big barrier for her to overcome and considering the fact that she's also like not the most physical person in the world it did feel pretty obvious that she was going to be targeted pretty soon but but it's funny here that Horacio does talk about how he wants to stay out of showmances because that's obviously a thing he does but also before the daily here we do get some pretty fun content 
from a really big fight in the house where Berna, again being Berna, gets upset seeing Big T and Melissa roll their eyes at her, which she ends up confronting them, and this leads to this really big fight that again felt very old school challenge, to which Berna calls Melissa a bully, and Melissa gets really upset as she was bullied as a kid, and they're really just screaming at each other, to which Berna ends up breaking a lamp as she leaves the room, and all that is just, again, pretty fun content that just feels like aspects of the show that have been missing in recent years, but anyway, we get to the day which is just kind of a boring challenge but one that is kind of interesting on paper again it's a very innovative challenge here of them having to solve math equations by driving around these cars that have these numbers and symbols on them and have to order them in the right way and again it's a cool concept but again i didn't feel like it made for the greatest tv but they do finally win it so i mean that's something again they got money obviously this thing i'm supposed to care a lot about but again by the time of deliberation it's clearly between berna and raven with everyone in the majority not trusting raven anymore and she ends up being target here despite again her alliance being in the majority which i will say is kind of a dumb aspect of this is that despite this majority alliance really holding the numbers they end up just voting in their own numbers for this entire phase of the game outside of the jessica vote it's also dumb because like raven doesn't really do much wrong here at least like enough to the point where you need to target her where where, yeah, she leaks information and everything, but none of that really felt like it was meant to be as a move against the main core alliance. And again, even if she is working both sides, why take out the person that's working both sides when you just take out the person that she's trying to work with to begin with and through that limit her options where again she's still someone that's willing to work with you again it just felt kind of dumb to just target her in this instance but here we see mariah create this plan to have all the women burn their votes and have the men be the ones to vote raven in because we do get a lot of content about how Corey's upset at this plan only for him to go through with it anyway to raven ends up getting voted in here to where again she votes in herself but then when she has the choice of who to drag into elimination with her who would have guessed it she picks hui hui i never would have guess considering her finally being on the show at the beginning of this episode that felt like a very clear setup anyway it ends up being a pretty physical challenge here kind of a modification of pole wrestled where they have to dig out the object beforehand and who he surprisingly ends up getting the first point here pretty much due to raven not watching her and her being able to get away unscathed the raven does proceed to win the following rounds meaning we lose who here who again straight up i forgot was even on this season and like who i think is kind of a disappointing transition from challenge argentina where i thought she was actually kind of fun on challenge argentina i thought she was a fun presence there on the main show again i just think the language barrier is a bit too much it just really feels like she's not been able to provide much entertainment largely due to that to where mixing that the fact that again she has no real connection she's also not particularly good physically like i just don't really see much potential potential for Huhui, you though know, she is a very likable presence and one that I don't mind as a TV personality, I just don't feel like the challenge is really the show for her here. But with that, we then get to episode four, where this episode ended up airing immediately after the previous one, because they were really trying to rush to the vets at this point, because their initial ratings were not particularly great. But it is funny that at the very beginning of this episode, we do get this flashback to the elimination from the previous episode that, again, had literally just aired. By the way, the daily itself here ends up being another kind of boring challenge them having to swim out to get puzzle pieces and solve the puzzle by the end and here we do get some content from Huey who's upset that he's not one of the main swimmers and other people being annoyed at him for that which really ends up setting up his elimination oh well major focus of the challenge itself ends up being Norris really struggling with the swimming portion where Ed has to come back for her and get her piece for her which I didn't think was allowed but I guess it is and they ended up winning the challenge because of it but anyway, at this point TJ does say that it's time for a male elimination because I guess now they're restricting it anyway early on we do get a lot of setup to Zara targeting Corey because Corey's a snake to which I mean Corey was very blatantly playing the middle of the house where we do see his relation with Asaf which ends up being a funny setup because during the following episode so they both end up playing the middle of the house here but along with that we also see Corey's relation with Huey and Corey talking about wanting to work with Huey down the road which again made it pretty clear that Huey was getting voted in and what do you know we follow that up with Michelle talking about wanting to protect Corey in the game which leads to her organizing the votes against Huey so we do get to the deliberation where Huey is shocked to hear his name and gets really confrontational to where he says that he can't even see a reason why he would be voted in which I mean it's not that deep 
But this leads to this pretty funny sequence of the men all talking about their strengths, which Michelle ends up calling it a circle jerk. But here we do see the target kind of shift a little bit at a point to where Norisa and Olivia do talk about wanting to target James instead, considering his connection to Mariah, though Mariah obviously doesn't want to go through with this and really ends up not mattering. Though with that, we do have Mariah telling James that this was a plan, to which he gets upset and calls the girls the C word which is obviously a good look for him. But again, through this video, get more focus on the Mariah James relationship with us getting a lot of Mariah just feeling bad about bananas to which we then see Olivia disapproving of the relationship. And in general, it did feel like Olivia gets a much more negative tinted edit this season of her being shown. Again, a bit judgy and also a bit jealous at points. But also in this episode, we do get an LGBT pride related party where through that Big T ends up coming out as bisexual, which again, nice moment for Big T. And yeah, really nice for a show that actually try to showcase its diversity, though in the same light, I feel like they could probably still do better, especially in terms of LGBT representation, but either way. Again, we get to the elimination where we get a lot of burn votes once again, but Huey obviously gets voted in here, to which he ends up picking Kylan, which again, doesn't properly get explained, though again, it seems to be due to him having no connection with him. But anyway, the challenge itself ends up being a very carnival gamey one where they rotate this track with baskets on it and roll these balls into the baskets, to which Kylan again gets to prop up his challenge knowledge by talking about having learned from watching Jordan who had to win two eliminations to win his season which is just such a random reference to be bringing up here and I assume it's here to prop up Jordan before he returns in the following episode they again just felt like a very weird throwaway line here but anyway with that Kylan ends up winning pretty easily here his first of many elimination wins on this season where it's in this instance where we do find out that he's Horacio's number one ally which really comes out of nowhere it's very strange that it's not even mentioned until the elimination here especially considering how important that relationship relationship ends up being for down the road but either way again with that we lose Huey who is still fun TV I still like Huey Huey's a really fun personality again I don't know if the challenge is really a game for him I don't feel like he's someone that I ever expect to win the challenge but again he's still good TV despite that I think he's someone that I, I would personally not be opposed to seeing back over and over and over again just to again he makes good TV and again he's not like a complete dud physically to where again there's at least a chance he can make a deep run at some point but again mostly someone that I would like to see on the show just because he is as confrontational as he is but now for episode 5, where we see them returning to the house to see a timer ticking down, meaning that we're nearing the start of chaos. The second phase of the game, that is definitely not the worst part of the season. But before the daily, we do get some setup to some relationships, like Asaf talking about wanting to keep Corey safe and that he's one of his best friends, which, I mean, I wonder what will happen to that relationship. Also, we do see Jay wanting to target Kieran, with Kieran getting some personal content, talking about wanting to win this time, after coming in second last time, which also, I wonder what that means for the rest of this episode. But then we get to the daily, where again, it's the start of the chaos phase. To which they don't bother to explain the rules of the chaos phase yet because that's the challenge for you. This ends up being a pairs challenge where they're tied up to a propeller on a truck as it drives along and they have to grab rings and throw it at targets along the way and it's a really strange challenge. I get feeling like this typical major set piece that a challenge like you lies even though there's not much substance to this challenge. And right away we do end up seeing Corey kind of game this challenge to where he ends up grabbing most of the rings all at once and up tossing them at the same time on a singular post and that essentially ends up winning him and Raven the challenge here and while we do see other teams try to utilize the same strat following that none of them are able to replicate what they do there leading to Corey and Raven winning the daily to which we finally get some of the format here in the fact that the winners now must immediately vote somebody into the arena with this being a male elimination day leading them agreeing on voting in a soft really ends up pissing off a lot of this cast here which is kind of funny as obviously it seemed like they were making this move to try to avoid conflict yet instead end up causing even more so and really this ends up being this big detriment to Corey's game in particular where right away we do see us off calling him a weasel and a coward and we even see them fighting on the way back to their cars which I feel like we rarely see anymore this drama happening while they're being transported away but, but again this does end up showing Corey's playing of both sides really catching up to him or he even ends up pissing off Michelle in the process who obviously was his closest ally with Michelle being paired up with Asaf during the challenge and through that Michelle is worried that she'll get thrown in as part of the format 
considering they don't know what the full format is at this point, which does lead to this kind of pointless drama of Michelle angrily confronting him and Cora getting emotional. And while I do understand Michelle's anger in this instance, I mean, I do feel like Cora legitimately didn't think this was actually putting her in any danger. It was simply just a bad move from Cora and not really done with any malice against Michelle. But anyway, we get to deliberation where Soft says, don't trust this liar and points at Cora to where we get more fighting between the two. But it's in this instance where Soft obviously obviously reveals that he wants to throw in Kieran as the strongest, smartest, and fastest, aka the person that Jay told him to vote in. All the UK alliance ends up targeting Emmanuel here, with Mariah surprisingly voting alongside them, which really makes you question, why isn't Mariah getting kicked out of her majority alliance if she's like blatantly making moves, not alongside her alliance like this, in situations where someone like Raven in particular got kicked out of the alliance for something a lot less major, but either way, Kieran gets voted in here with him ending up voting for himself as well, because obviously. Now beyond this, we do get some focus on the Horacio Norris relationship, where that relationship starts to blossom here, to which Olivia ends up saying that this relationship is interesting, to which along the course of this season she does become increasingly jealous of their relationship which again adds this more negative tinge to her edit but anyway we get to the elimination where tj says that to be the best you have to beat the best to which we get the reveal that the eliminations here will be the competitors facing off against a former champion to where this is where jordan comes out to which he obviously gets hyped up as the best challenge competitor being a world champion and Kylan obviously gets this content really hyping him up in confessional because I guess that's Kylan's role on this season. It does make you question at this point, like, if we are bringing back these champions anyway, why wasn't this just an invasion of the champion season? Obviously, yeah, they wanted a new champion, but it really felt like everything was kind of primed for this to be an invasion of the champion style season, though that doesn't end up happening. And to be honest, I'm fine with that. It's just that what they end up doing here is just kind of worse to where the format that we get here is that Jordan will now have the participate in elimination against one of the nominees here. There are a few wins in that challenge. Then he gets $10,000 from the prize pot, which I definitely care about. With that person also being eliminated, however, the person wins the challenge, then they get to stay in the game which is lame as again this is essentially just meaning that any of the episodes in the chaos phase of the game can be an on elimination episode and spoiler there are a lot of them which really just messes with the pacing of the season and also is just again really dumb to see the same people getting thrown in over and over and over again and just not going home because they win these challenges which leads to a lot of repetitiveness in how these episodes play out so we're also now with the chance that the people that you throw into elimination not going home and also just increases the chance that you're just gonna send the same people over and over again because you're not going to want to create new enemies that could potentially come back into the game also this disincentivizes you to make big moves in the game because you could just make a big move and that person just comes right back anyway and really again like all this just feels so avoidable as it's like why not just have both of the eliminate players participate against the challenge champion and whoever does the worst against that person ends up going home again that would have been a lot more interesting where the champion has to beat both of the eliminate players to get the money however also still guarantee that someone goes home every episode to where again this format here really just ends up harming this season so we're considering that this is a good chunk of the season, like pretty much the middle half of the season, it really does end up stripping a lot away from the quality of this season. But here we do also learn that the way that the player that gets put into elimination gets decided is through the draw, where there are three polls, one of each of the nominee's names and a third one that is chaos which they don't tell them what chaos means because that's the challenge though again this is kind of what you would expect again typical trope that they've been using for years now but here we do see a soft praying that he's the one that gets to go against the champ of champs only for kieran to get pulled instead taking us to the elimination king of the hills a challenge that has them running between these two ramps and having to hit these lights to get points when they turn on randomly, which is an aspect of the challenge I don't particularly like, it does very much feel like a challenge that's very open for producer influence there. And we do get some controversy from this challenge. So where right away, we do see Kieran taking a pretty big lead at first, to where Jordan doesn't even end up trying, just allowing Kieran to win round one. And then we just see Jordan just stand
standing in the center and letting Kieran get two points following that. Only for Jordan to say in the confessional that this is a sign and that this is his arena and his domain. AKA, he didn't want to participate because he was upset at some rulings and wanted to reset. But again, the show tries to turn this into this is just how badass Jordan is when it's no, he's upset at how unfair this challenge is, which is kind of funny when you contextualize it that way. But anyway, Jordan ends up having a pretty big comeback here, ends up winning the challenge. Through this, we do have Jordan giving this speech to the other players, which in doing so, Emmanuel turns his back to him and later says, I'd love to see you in elimination. And Jordan says, you should have gone down. And we get this bickering between the two that is, again, kind of fun, really one of the only things that's fun from Emmanuel on this season. But yeah, with that, we do lose Kieran, who, again, was fine. I mean, he was fine his first time around in Challenge Australia. He was kind of fine here. He's not someone I think makes the most riveting TV on the challenge in his run so far, especially outside of, like, his messiness in episode one of Challenge Australia. But outside of that, like, he's just kind of fine. I mean, I think he does have potential. Like, I would not be shocked if Kieran comes back and eventually does extremely well in the show. Though really, he's not someone that I'm particularly dying to see play again. But anyway, with that, we get to episode six, where right away we get introduced to this underground alliance that's supposedly running the game of this Fantastic Four that involves Narice, Asaf, Jay, and Michelle, which was very clearly a pregame alliance, though the show tries to portray it as it wasn't. But it is funny that we do see Asaf saying that he's doing a good job at keeping himself off the radar, when it's like you were literally just in elimination the previous episode. But either way, this alliance ends up talking about how they're targeting Millicent and Big T, which they constantly do for multiple episodes. But then we get to the daily where it is going to be played in teams where they have the fight for balls in the middle of the playing field and, and using those balls get bingo on their boards. And again, it was just kind of a fine challenge, a pretty physical one. But we do get a couple notable moments from it. First up in the fact that the teams here were decided based on where they were standing, which was weird. Now, obviously, I assume producers set them up in where they were standing and it was kind of this pre-planned thing. But again, it was just kind of a weird setup to determine how the teams were made here, which they continue to end up doing moving on in the season. But the main intrigue here came from the fact that Big T and Melissa were on the same team, something that kind of constantly happens for some reason. But through that, Olivia decides to sabotage her own team to make sure that they don't win the challenge and aren't safe. So we do end up essentially seeing the two other teams work together to make sure that Big T and Melissa don't win the challenge. Even seeing Norris really fight for a ball that she didn't need, which leads to this big fight between Norris and Melissa here, with Melissa claiming that she's playing dirty. But beyond that, I mean, Melissa becomes the clear target for the winning team here. So where despite Kylan trying to stick up for her, he gets outnumbered anyway. Though we do end up seeing Zara being conflicted on where to vote, to where it is funny, where she's the first person called for her vote, to where she's upset at, why can't my team help? Help me decide. Which is kind of the frustration of Zara in this game, where it doesn't really feel like she had any real plan when playing this game. But anyway, way, obviously, Melissa gets voted in, which is kind of a strange choice, realistically. Like, why not just go for Big T, especially when Kylan's on your team anyway? Like, Melissa's going to be voted in by the other teams anyway. It felt kind of weird that they, like, forced the team that had Kylan on it to vote in Melissa here. But we do get more fighting beyond this between Melissa and Norris, to where Norris just ends up leaving the fight midway through, saying that she doesn't want to get DQ'd, which, I mean, to be fair, showing some care character development from Norris there, I guess. But again, Big T ends up being the house vote here anyway, with them trying to pull over Corey to initially vote Norris, but Corey ends up convincing them to vote for Raven instead, and then proceeds to rat them out, which, again, works for him long-term to a degree, I guess. To where his constant moves to try to gain the favor of the majority once again does eventually work. But again, it is really upsetting to see him continuously go back to this group that constantly had him on the bottom. And again, was really upset at him in the previous round. But anyway, we get to the liberation where Melissa ends up doing some campaigning for Big T, only for no one to end up supporting Big T here. With us getting a unanimous vote against her, with even the other UK players not siding with them. and even Melissa herself by the end just voting in Big T because why not? Either way, we get to the arena where we get the reveal that the next champion that's going to arrive is Kaz, which is funny as she hasn't even been on a proper challenge season yet. And it is really funny seeing the show really prop her up when most of the audience doesn't know who she is and she's going to proceed to just lose the following elimination against Big T, which is not a good look. But again, obviously we get the draw, Big T gets picked, and we do get an elimination that actually does kind of favor Big T here and it being one that involves them having the roll in a barrel and considering Big T as a weight advantage there, it does lead to her being able to control the barrel 
lot better than Kaz to where Big T ends up winning on the puzzle to which again we get a lot of propping up a Big T talking about how she beat a two-time champion which I mean yeah to be fair she did but still not an overtly impressive elimination win from Big T here and really just all, overall obviously a very disappointing showing from Kaz in this instance but with that again this is the first non-elimination episode of the season which I'm sure there won't be any more of but with that we get to episode 7 where we start off with the Callum and Michelle relationship with him also getting personal content talking about his mom so I wonder what's gonna happen here along with the fact that we get Corey talking about he's feeling like he's on the bottom of the US alliance and we see Melissa talking about trusting him obviously that's not gonna go well either but again we get more focus on the Norris Horacio relationship that really just leads to a lot of people just kind of trashing on Horacio with Erna of all people talking about how bad his social game is and there's a lot of talk about how Olivia was his political game the previous season to where people talk about how he doesn't have a voice and it really just simply felt like he just did not bother spending time with most people on this cast to where it's being portrayed in a pretty negative light across this episode obviously a very different light to how he was perceived in the previous season though some of this content has come from Emmanuel who along with that also gets personal content because obviously but anyway we then get to the daily which ends up being another kind of lame challenge that is this pretty big set piece of them having to swing across the water to get this pyramid and copy this pattern from one pyramid to the other but again i just found this so boring and also strangely we do have the teams being uneven here and there being five teams of three but then one team of four which is obviously a dumb ramification of people not necessarily going home which would obviously give the four person team a massive advantage here if it wasn't for the fact that Mariah was on that team and she's scared of falling in the water because she just had a nose job and through that doesn't end up even really participating however the challenge does end up having Horacio Kylan and Big T winning the challenge again who would have guessed that Horacio would have won this challenge after that previous segment in which this ends up being a men's elimination day and what do you know they vote in Emmanuel who would have guessed though this does lead to some anger from the majority here and them wanting the UK guy to go in instead but again for Kylan Horacio I do actually think this is the correct call to make I mean they are on the bottom of this group and I do think they should be taking their shot at Emmanuel who clearly is this big threat as we do end up seeing him later down the road but also someone that's really empowering the core of the US alliance and someone that they're not particularly connected to so again I do think this is the right call there however despite that the show doesn't think so to where Horacio himself ends up saying that he doesn't think it's the right time to make this move and like in reality again like they were screwed anyway like they were going to come after Kyla and Horacio soon no matter what so again to try to claim like this is the reason why they were targeted here does feel a bit ridiculous but it does lead to this really weird subplot of Horacio talking about how oh I need to show that I have a voice now and I need to change my game moving forward which he doesn't do but anyway Corey is clearly the target for the vote here despite Michelle actually wanting to keep him safe showing her actually not get her way in this instance which is kind of surprising considering how much influence she seemed to have for most of the season but Corey's the only name that comes up at the liberation to which we do get this pretty crazy sequence here of Corey just throwing everyone under the bus here and calling out Raven for being wishy-washy he comes clean about lying to Big T and Melissa openly saying that he was using them for info and that Big T is shady and that he doesn't trust her obviously leading to Big T and Melissa fighting back in this instance and while everyone does end up voting for Corey here I actually feel like this was maybe the right call for him. Now, I don't know if the approach was necessarily the right approach, but obviously I do think him separating himself from Big T and Melissa was the right call to make. It does earn him trust with the majority group once again. And again, eventually he does find himself well situated within that group again. And again, this is a situation where Corey's going to go in anyway. I mean, at this point, he might as well throw a Hail Mary to try to better his position in the long term. And again, I do think it ends up working out here, even though I do think his frankness in this situation probably comes off a bit too cold. But anyway, we get to the arena where Devin ends up being this week's champion, to which he finally ends up being the one to pull out Chaos, which is revealed to just be that he can pick anyone outside the daily winners, which is kind of what you would expect it to be but this is another aspect of the format here that i don't particularly love again it's another aspect of the format that really just benefits the majority alliance as this is just a massive disadvantage to 
the players that have not been on a proper challenge season as obviously these alumni that are coming in are friends with the people that have been on multiple previous seasons and through that it really ends up disadvantaging these players that came from these spinoff shows as they don't have these relationships with the alumni and what do you know he ends up picking Callum here who would have guessed but through that I mean it does lead to some pretty fun drama from Michelle obviously being upset at this and just openly saying what the fuck in that instance so again we get to the elimination which ends up being a counting challenge which was kind of lame but there was a physical portion at the beginning of it that Callum actually ends up doing much better at than Devin which is kind of what you would expect however despite the entire cast helping Callum count his pieces Devin ends up winning the challenge instead but to be fair again it is a mental challenge you would expect Devin to win the challenge like this this felt like a challenge that was very much catered towards Devin to begin with but anyway with that we do lose Callum who out of the players from the international shows that end up appearing on this season I do feel like Callum probably brought the most to the table where I did like some of his confessionals and again he obviously had the relationship with Michelle which again isn't my favorite storyline of the season but he still at least had a role on this season to where he wasn't a complete dud here and again I liked him on his original season as well and I do feel like Callum definitely has a lot of potential for down the road now as a challenger he kind of is just kind of middle of the road but again I think he has the potential to be a really fun personality yeah I do feel like he does bring a decent amount to this season to where he's someone that I wouldn't be opposed to seeing more of down the road. But with that, we then get to episode eight, where who would have guessed it? We start off with us hearing about Big T and Melissa being massive targets. Who would have guessed? But anyway, it takes us to the daily, which ends up being Tower of Power, aka the JCT challenge of you having to create a barricade that the other team has to break through, which here we get history repeating itself with Jay leading his team to victory here. All while the opposing team, which ends up containing Big T and Melissa, ends up losing. Who would have guessed that? But it's funny to see the losing team here being led by Kylan, who ends up talking about how he's thought about what he would do in this challenge for hours and hours, only for a strat that he ends up using to suck, and him leading his team to a loss here. And obviously, we see the winning team vote in Melissa here once again, where once again, she's really upset and ends up being confrontational Corey, which is some fun content. But, but through there only being two teams here, it essentially means this losing team is the only one that gets to vote for the other nominee, which is actually kind of an interesting situation with very limited options here if it wasn't for the fact that Big T was an available option that was just an easy go-to though with that we do see Colleen finally coming back to the show where she's here simply because she's a decoy target where we do see Mariah wanting Colleen out for some reason again not really explained why outside the fact that I guess she has some sort of relationship with Melissa but again that really ends up going nowhere but through that we get more drama from Melissa that, that is really fun here it really just feels like old school challenge here of her first First, going up to Berna and saying that she heard that she was the leader of the vote against her from Mariah, which was a lie that does lead to a fight between Berna and Mariah, which was fun to see. And again, I like it when people proactively lie in games like this, though the way she handles it here is in a pretty sloppy manner, especially considering Melissa proceeds to literally do the exact same thing with Raven following this, leading to a fight between the two that gets very heated here with Melissa ending up throwing her drink at Raven, creating this really big feud between the two here we do a big t knowing that she's going in and though we do see some pretty fun campaigning from her with her jump scaring ed from behind the chairs and bribing him with money which obviously doesn't end up working which i mean like i really haven't talked about ed at all in this review up to this point but again it was very frustrating to see ed also feel very complacent within his alliance not really do anything to shake up his position considering again while he wasn't obviously an initial target with there being other targets ahead of him by the time his alliance becomes the only remaining players he's very clearly on the bottom of that alliance and he should be trying to better his position though he simply doesn't which was really annoying to see but anyway we do get to the deliberation where we do see melissa and raven fighting once again and it is really funny here to see kylan try to fight for melissa calling people out for going with the majority only for him to then proceed to vote in big t to which is soft then proceeds to call him a coward but obviously big t gets voted in so we do get to the arena where casey is the champion for this episode 
episode because I'm sure everyone was so excited to see Casey, which I mean, to be fair, the players were, but again, I feel like none of the audience was. Anyway, Casey ends up picking Big T here, leading us to essentially a pole wrestle, which was obviously going to be so foreshown, where I love how we really get this hyping up as if Big T actually had a shot here. And to be fair, she does end up winning a point, but no way Casey was going to lose a pole wrestle to Big T. And I love how we even get a confessional from Corey saying, oh, it all comes down the strategy because I guess, I guess that's what Paul Russell comes down to when you have Casey versus Big T. But obviously Casey wins here. Big T is eliminated. And again, this is a big loss this season here. Big T was such a star on this season up to this point. I mean, really her and Melissa were really these only saving graces early on in the season of them being the main source of entertainment on their show. And again, Big T's still an incredible confessional list, still really fun personality. Again, I still stand by the fact that I don't think Big T can win the challenge. I don't think she really has much of a chance of ever winning a season, though she still is a likable presence here that makes me not opposed to seeing her on the show moving forward. Especially considering, again, like, she can have these moments where she does surprise people. So again, at least there's that. But for her luck to eventually run out here, especially against Casey in a pole wrestle, is not particularly shocking. Now for episode 9, we are right away at the beginning of the episode. We do get a reestablishment of the Melissa Asaf relationship, which, again, feels very apparent to what's going to happen. Though, through this, we do see Asaf being like, again really cocky here talking about how he thinks he's the new Devin which I don't even know what that really means but also here we do clearly see that Colleen and Raven are on the bottom of the majority alliance where Colleen finally returns to the show but we do get a lot from Colleen in this episode with her hooking up with Emmanuel despite the fact that he has a girlfriend which really sets up this double standard for Emmanuel across the season that again felt a bit icky in the fact that the edit seems to support Emmanuel in this situation while the likes of Mariah has the face a lot of negativity stemming from her relationship with Bananas, and we see, like, Olivia talk about how she's giving up her game for a man, so it feels like she faces a lot of negative ramifications for this situation, while Manuel simply doesn't. Really personified by a later scene where Colleen is annoyed that he's flirting with everyone, and, and we see him cuddling with, like, Olivia and with Raven, only for Berna to get upset with Colleen for hooking up with him to begin with, saying that he has a girlfriend, which it's like, yeah, he's the one with the girlfriend. So again, the fact that they're trying to blame this on Colleen instead of Emmanuel also feels icky there. Anyway, coming to the elimination, we do see a lot of people just assuming that it's going to be a men's elimination day, with Horacio and Kylan talking about being in danger, taking us to the daily, where we get the instant setup where the champ they have for them today is one of the goats, which, I mean, is it? Again, very strange how much they hype up Tori on this show. But anyway, the challenge ends up being run in seven teams of two, but one team of three, which is a massive advantage for that team of three, where we have three mini challenges across this challenge, where the losing team is eliminated, and along with that, the winner of the challenge ends up being able to pick two teams to eliminate in the process. The challenge, I think, is fun on paper, again, really showing the social dynamics in the house, though at the same time, it really just favors the majority here, who already have this massive stranglehold on this game, and mixing that into the fact that there are even social strategy aspects added to the challenges themselves, like the first one, having the opportunity to sabotage other teams, so where we do you see Emmanuel and Berna both sabotage Kylan, where he ends up having no shot here, but it does lead to the three-person team of Asaf, Zara, and Raven winning the challenge here. Despite the fact that both Zara and Raven are actually not that well integrated within the majority, so while again, the challenge very much favored them, it at least did on paper open up the game to something interesting here, but the problem is that they essentially just do the majority's bidding and taking out another outsider here, with Zara once again being extremely passive in her decision making. And we do end up seeing Melissa going to Asaf and making him promise that he'll keep her safe. And we do see that it's a women's day, which leads to some shock there, especially in the sense that Raven and Zara were the two biggest targets on the women's side of things, and they're now safe. But who would have guessed this all leads up to Raven wanting Melissa out and Asaf going with it? With this feeling of a situation where Raven's a bit too tunnel vision here. Now, I mean, realistically, Melissa probably would have gone for Raven. Also, but I think there are bigger problems in the game at this point than Melissa, who has no other real allies. But through this situation, we do see Kyle Island standing up for Melissa here and talking about what's a soft's wife gonna think about him breaking a promise with a mother and leading to this big fight between the two which again felt very reminiscent to Kylan's fight with Xavier though in that initial instance it felt a bit more icky this situation felt a bit more warranted and to be fair I mean it 
probably is just complete bias here in that Kylan is a more rootable figure on this season than he was on BB-23, but this does end up being a pretty fun sequence here, along with the fact that we also get in a soft Melissa fight at the club later on, which again just really just emphasizes how annoying it is to see a soft play the game this way, him taking out all these people that are closer to him in favor of sticking to this bigger majority alliance. Now, obviously, he should be sticking to this big majority alliance. Those are his loyal allies in the game. However, he should also be trying to keep around these people that he's closer to and get rid of these other people within the majority alliance that are more connected to other people than him. And it feels like he's really just building up these relationships on this season simply to crush them, which comes off as poor play to me. So following this, we do see Colleen being the next target on the board with, for some reason, her being shocked at her name coming up with Colleen talking about this is the time for her to change strategies and protect people in the same position as her, which she perceives to not do. To her spite, Colleen trying to pin some votes onto Mariah throughout the rest of the episode, it doesn't end up going through. And really, that was probably one of the worst people she could have targeted here anyway, as Mariah was someone that at least had connections to the opposite side of the house and through that could have been someone that would have been more willing to flip, but instead she just ostracizes her instead and really just ends up having almost everyone voting in Colleen. Taking us to the arena where we get talk about the champion here is one of the greatest players ever play the game with the reveal that it's Tori because obviously when coming out Tori ends up telling Mariah that this isn't good and that Bananas is heartbroken again feeling strange that Tori is shaming Mariah for quote-unquote cheating even though it's not really even fully that in this instance where Tori herself is known for having cheated on multiple previous partners and Bananas himself also is known for having cheated on pretty much everyone he's been with to where and this felt extremely hypocritical for Tori of all people to be calling her out here but anyway the elimination itself is just kind of boring Melissa gets picked here it involves them having to go in a water tank and solve a puzzle again boring stuff Tori wins Melissa is eliminated and again losing Melissa here was definitely a big hit to the season I and mean, Melissa definitely brought a lot of drama to this this season and was one of the main stars of the season up to this point and really her relationship with Big T was probably the most prominent storyline in the early portions of the season especially considering how much of underdogs they were and again considering how much drama she was bringing something that again felt kind of missing from this show I do feel like she brought this energy to the show that hasn't really been there in the last few seasons of kind of this more messy arguments that made her role on this season feel a bit fresh especially after her total madness run where again it didn't feel like she really brought that much to that season where again, I really feel like she kind of redeemed herself on this season the where again she's someone i would love to see back at some point down the road but with that we move on to episode 10 where early on in the episode we get ed's personal content again made it clear he was gonna be important to the episode now to be fair he doesn't get put in in this episode he's simply just a decoy though really i feel like that's more so indicative of how much they've already focused on the other people that are going in and how much those same people are going in over and over again anyway we get to the daily where they're split into two teams and we have this like group on the top they're swinging on these spears while people at the bottom are solving a puzzle and it's not particularly interesting. Really, it's just a standard big set piece challenge that has no real substance to it. And it's funny too because they don't even bother explaining the teams in this instance though. But here we do see Michelle talking about how she's stressed that all of her allies are on her team only for it to turn out to be a guy's day anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Here we do see Jay's team win and talks about it's time to take a shot, aka targeting Kylan and Horacio, who he's already been targeting. But with Horacio on the winning team, that does mean that Kylan obviously gets voted in here with Horacio being outnumbered and being upset that he didn't have Kylan's back which this does lead to this tension between Kylan and Jay throughout the rest of the episode where we do see this very awkward conversation between the two to which Jay ends up blaming Kylan for being on the bottom due to him isolating himself with Melissa as if he wasn't just gonna be the target by this point anyway considering he's on the bottom of their alliance and it always has been but anyway here's where Berna finally returns to the show where she talks about being on the bottom as well and talks to Michelle being upset that she She's just a number and proceeds to be upset that Michelle doesn't spend time with her, leading to a fight between the two at the bar to where we get a lot of talk about how draining it is to be her friend, which again, doesn't really lead to much. Though again, it was at least some nice drama to have to the episode. Beyond that, we do get Ed talking about how it's a sure thing that James is getting voted in and that he doesn't need the campaign really being even more frustration of how Ed is playing the game and him being just so passive here all while James essentially does the same thing where despite him thinking that he's going to be the house vote and Mariah even telling him to fight for himself he says that he's not gonna go begging which is again kind of indicative of his gameplay on this season of him again just also playing super passively which kind of is frustration of some of these people that did make it pretty deep into the game that were not in the core alliance the fact that they just simply never made a move 
move against that alliance, despite the fact that they knew they were on the bottom. But anyway, we get to nominations where we do get a fun little sequence here of Kylan saying that it's a funeral and that he's throwing his own funeral, clearly being an homage to Dan's funeral from Big Brother, though really it doesn't end up affecting the game too much as James obviously gets voted in here anyway, with James and Kylan being the only ones to vote in Ed, leading up to the elimination where Darrell comes out and Kylan gets picked, leading to an elimination that was a bit strange of them having to move a platform to light up these fires and really it was one that again I didn't find to be the most riveting TV even though it was again a pretty innovative challenge kind of a modification of one that I think we saw in one of the spinoff shows but either way Kylan ends up winning here stays in the game starting off this long stretch of non-elimination episodes which ends up being really boring but anyway we end the episode with the reveal that they're doing a challenge right now because I care so much and again it matters even less considering there's the one week break in between episodes to where again I literally don't care that they're going to be doing a challenge immediately afterwards anyway it takes us to episode 11 where we get a nighttime challenge of them having to go to a graveyard to participate in the gross food eating comp which is never that interesting but here we have teams of four and they have to run out and solve trivia questions and then when they get back they have to eat all their food and again just standard stuff montage of people puking not fun tv but we do see colleen mariah james and Corey win the challenge here again like people that are not really that well integrated within the core group yet they once again don't do anything about it where Corey does talk about now is the time to make a big move in targeting horacio who again has been the target Target already, but it turns out to be a women's elimination day to where we do see Mariah wanting to put Berna in, though Ori and Colleen reject that and instead end up voting in Raven, with James just going with the majority because that's what he does. Or Raven ends up being voted in here, leading to this pretty fun bickering between her and Corey. By the way, also in this episode, we do get an anything but clothes party because that's a thing people do. Jordan, Norris, and Horacio finally kiss to where we do get some drama surrounding them, where Norris cries over Horacio having an obligation until April and, and having to wait for him and her talking about her struggles in finding love and again all this was pretty nice personal content for Norris. So here we also get more drama from Berna with her kicking out Norris from her bedroom that props up Berna as a target with us seeing the UK contingent wanting to target her though the reality is that Zara was always going to be the target here instead we get to nominations where Zara ends up nominating herself claiming that she's doing so so that they can keep money for the prize pool aka she's throwing in herself because she's she knows that she's going to be voted in anyway, which the other cast members end up calling her out for here. But for the elimination, we do get a lot of talk about Michelle being worried that Laurel is coming in and is going to pick her, where I wonder who's going to show up in this episode. Who would have guessed it? We get Laurel at the elimination. There do get a funny little moment of Laurel saying that she wants to send someone down here and says purple jacket, just referring to Michelle by the clothes she wears. So we do see Michelle looking terrified as she tries to talk down Laurel here, saying they got a lot of the same friends and says that she's going to send her flowers and they're going to make up and again it's just so funny to see how scared Michelle is in this instance but Laurel doesn't get the opportunity to pick her anyway and ends up getting Raven to where we get an elimination of them having to initially pull a chain though eventually it just leads to them having to recreate a color sequence which again is a challenge that doesn't really feel in Laurel's wheelhouse and who would have guessed it Raven wins this in a situation where it seemed like a decent amount of people were helping her out and mixing that and the fact that Laurel also lost a peg and really freaks out during that and ends up losing time because of that at least the raven winning here which again is a pretty big upset obviously i mean laurel is obviously one of the best challenge competitors of all time and while she's again not been most consistent recently again seeing raven beat laurel here was a pretty big upset but through that again it's another non-elimination episode and that streak is not ending anytime soon where we follow that up with episode 12 where michelle talks about all of her vendettas are gone so she'll be okay making it very obvious that she's not going to be okay but here we do see kylan and arise talking about alliances and kylan tries to pull her over to his side where arise talks about not picking a side as she's loyal to all of them which really means nothing but we also get more personal content for arise where she talks to her family and tells them about horacio who they love though this is also where for some reason her family warns her about olivia where they talk about how olivia is talking mad shit about her which 
how would they know? Like, did that come from spoilers? Again, that was very strange. They allowed this on the show here. And they do this to set up Narice being upset at Olivia and thinking that she could be playing her, which actually ends up being a pretty long-term storyline that I was actually kind of surprised that we got here on the challenge. Where again, I was like, I criticized the show for having all these short-term storylines that make it very obvious what's going to happen, though. This is one that really takes a lot of the season for this content to actually end up mattering. And I actually do think the setup of Narice's distrust in Olivia and mixing that in with Olivia's overall attitude in the game kind of culminates in a pretty satisfying payoff by the time it ends up mattering later down the road. But anyway, Olivia also gets personal content here, talking about having self-doubt, about living up to her last season, and being upset at the fact that she hasn't won a daily yet, which, again, did actually trick me here in the fact that I did 100% think she was winning this daily. Though, to be fair, they did a similar thing with Nelson last season, where he doesn't win the one where it first comes up, but eventually wins one later down the road. Again, they essentially do that for Olivia here. But either way, we get to the daily, where it has teams of four having to push each other into the water by pushing a wall, and this was another time where it was assumed to just be a guy's day, to where we do see Michelle talking about not needing to win it here and we do see some bickering between her and her team who weren't really the core members of her alliance to where you can clearly tell that kylan in particular felt like she was going to throw the challenge finally we do see raven also talking about throwing the challenge here she doesn't care which guy goes in which is obviously a notion that ends up backfiring on her but Again, shockingly, Olivia's team doesn't win here, only for Zara's team to win the elimination here on what, again, ends up being another women's elimination day, which we'll talk about the context behind that. But Horacio seems to want to vote in Michelle, to which Berna ends up rejecting that plan, saying that Michelle is my queen, with Horacio saying that she's everybody's. But the decision here is clearly between Raven and Colleen, with Colleen looked at as the least messy pick, despite the fact that Berna wants to save Colleen as well. But again, Colleen gets voted in anyway to where Colleen is surprised that Ed didn't have her back, to which Ed says that there's a long list of alliances and some are higher than others, which it's like, yeah, you aren't, so you're in the same spot. Where, again, I just don't understand how Ed was looking at this game and how he didn't realize that he was towards the bottom of the pecking order. But anyway, Colleen does get more content in this episode talking about how she has nothing to lose now and wants to make a big move and all that gets ratted back out to Jay and Michelle by a soft. And with us also seeing Corey not getting bored either, it really ends up leading to nothing. Oh, while the Olivia Horacio relationship gets a lot of focus here as well, where Olivia says it's disrespectful that Horacio didn't even tell her that he's coming on this season and, and talks about how he's just a taker and he's selfish and is upset at the time that he spends in the race and Zara over her, which again just felt like jealousy here. Though we do see Jay attempt to turn Olivia against Horacio in this instance, which did seem somewhat effective at least for a short term, which felt like this also pretty big heel turn for Jay to where really from this point forward, he does come off as more and more unlikable. But anyway, we get to the deliberation where it ends up being a pretty easy Raven vote here. And despite Raven proclaiming that she'll not self-vote herself, she ends up doing so anyway. If Kylan being the only person not vote for her and voting for Mariah in this instance, which I mean, did feel like an unnecessary move from him. But either way, we get to the elimination and out comes Cara Maria, who they clearly make a big deal of here. And I was personally excited to see her back. I mean, while we know she's coming up in All Stars 4, we haven't seen her on the main show in a while. And again, excited to see that she's finally back in the rotation. And she makes for some pretty good TV here. Going on a spiel to the cast, calling them knockoffs, and supposedly made other comments that didn't make air that I wish they did. Though, here we also get a funny little moment of Kara calling Michelle orange shirt in a similar way to how Laurel referred to her just by her clothing. Ends up asking her who she would want to vote in, with Michelle not being willing to throw any names. To which Kara says, well, I'm pulling you down then. Which, I mean, to be fair, she was going to anyway. Again, Michelle doesn't have the greatest reputation amongst the MTV alumni, to where I 100% just feel like Michelle was just going to be a target for a lot of them anyway. And what do you know? Kara ends up getting chaos. So she obviously ends up picking orange shirt. It gets to elimination that, again, did not feel like it's in Kara's wheelhouse. Definitely felt like something more in Michelle's wheelhouse of, again, there being a physical portion to it of you having to get these cubes from around the arena, but following that, it becomes this big puzzle that, again, felt like something that Michelle would excel in. Oh, well, Kara, again, never was particularly good at puzzles. And with the other members of the cast also helping Michelle in the puzzle also, again, it felt pretty clear Michelle was going to win here. Though again, it is a shocking result here to see Kara lose to Michelle. And we also get this big celebration that was pretty funny to see with Michelle really gloating about this to where, again, it was a fun ending to the episode here with Kara bringing a lot of drama to the show, but, but again, it ends up being another non-elimination episode, which is still pretty lame. But then we get to episode 13. 
13, which is an episode where, again, it felt like something could happen here, where we get the setup of the split house dynamic again, with Colleen once again talking about having to play her own game, and we do see her trying to work with Raven now, who's working alongside Kylan, Horacio, and Zara, which again makes it feel like this group is finally coming together, only from the not be able to do much of anything. But we do then get to the daily where it ends up being another pretty boring one. Again, a typical set piece one of a massive truck coming out and them having to be in teams of four and have to get these tiles out of the water tank on the truck. And again, it was just so boring. But also here we do see the majority once again targeting Kylan and Horacio with their teams respectively throwing the challenge to make sure they don't win, which is obviously optimal strategy there, but also very lame to watch. Oh, well, Ed, Berna, Corey, and Olivia end up winning the challenge challenge here, giving Olivia her first daily win. That's something. And she uses that to not fight for Horacio to where he gets voted in here. In the situation where, again, like, I don't understand why they just didn't vote in Kylan. Like, why didn't they just let Horacio be the house vote, vote in Kylan here to appease Olivia? But I guess that's not a thing they do on this season. But here we do have Kylan telling Corey that he's scared. And Corey says, I just did the bravest thing in the house with a soft saying, bravest thing ever. Which is like, again, yes, the bravest thing ever is to target the guy very clearly on the bottom. And like Corey says that he's the first person to go out on a limb, which is like, eh. By the way, this ends up being the umpteenth episode where Colleen talks about now is the time to switch up the game. Or we do see some really questionable play from Jay here and her strategizing with him, only for him to openly tell her that the only woman that he would protect over her is Raven, which obviously just tells her that she's on the bottom of the alliance and incentivizes her to flip here to where, you know, we do see Kylan really leading the charge in this vote against Jay here, which did seem to gain some traction at first with Colleen seeming on board and him having, again, Horacio, Raven, and Zara on board though they do need James to vote with them, only for James to be James and end up not going through with it because Mariah doesn't want to go through with it. But really, he just seemed to be solely playing his game for Mariah and not really having much of a brain of his own, which is, again, just kind of frustrating on this season. So again, the plan doesn't go through here. But through this, Jay does continue to come off really negatively here. Again, coming off really arrogant and even turning Narisa away to where they get in an argument over how he's acting. And we also see him also pissing off Olivia as well, to where there seems to be this minor repairing of the relationship between Olivia and Horacio in the process. Or again, it just felt like Jay was continuously turning away his own allies in this instance, but obviously Jay ends up learning about this plan being put together and ends up confronting Kylan's alliance in a pretty aggressive way here, to where by that point, even Michelle ends up calling him out for how poorly he's playing all this. But anyway, we get to the deliberation, where the vote ends up being between Jay and Kylan, though again, despite Kylan having a decently sized faction with him, it's simply just not enough. And while we do see Norris burn voting in this instance, showing her again, at least not following Jay's alliance, still Kylan ends up being voted in despite that, leading us to the elimination where Brad comes out. Kind of random, considering the caliber of competitors we've had up to this point, and it felt like it was continuously elevating, and for now Brad to be the penultimate one, again, it felt weird, but obviously it was supposed to be bananas, to where, I mean, he claims that he was never supposed to be here, though, again, credible spoiler accounts do say that he was, and considering the fact that we know that Brad was a last second replacement. Again, it feels like 100% Bananas was supposed to be here, and I assume he probably turned it down due to the Mariah situation, which I think is a travesty, as obviously that would have made for incredible TV to see him come out here, though. Again, it's all for naught. And to be fair, also probably played a factor into the ordering of the eliminations here, probably why we got so many female eliminations in a row, because they need to wait for Brad to come in, but again, I think that actually probably led to more intrigue on this season, with the players themselves being shocked at what gender day was coming up, but either way, Brad ends up getting Kylan. Mostly Brad just comes off as fodder here. I mean, the elimination itself ends up being this pretty physical one of them having to climb up and down this tower and transfer these balls to the top. And again, Kylan pretty easily wins this here, meaning that we once again get a non-elimination episode, thankfully for the last time. But again, just a really lame stretch of episodes here to where, again, while there is some intrigue happening within the game itself, it is just really disappointing to see no one ever go home. The way it takes us to episode 14, where here we have Colleen essentially now giving up on flipping and instead calls herself Moline and now talks about playing the middle, which is 
boring. Oh, well, Manuel finally comes back to the show, talking about how he's sticking true to his allies, though he does worry about Olivia Norisk potentially flipping on him, which I wonder what's gonna happen here. But again, we get to the Daily, where it is funny that we still have 16 people left in the game when there's only six episodes left, but the Daily itself ends up being a mini-final, where you have teams of four, and they have three checkpoints they've been going back and forth between, and again, the challenge itself is kind of boring here, though. We do get some humor from it, where right away we do see Colleen really struggling at the first checkpoint, having a bit of a meltdown there, though by the time the third checkpoint, the teams are pretty much tied to where we do have Jay's team getting the lead there through literally just guessing on the lock combination. So they have a lead coming into the final puzzle, though the final puzzle itself ends up essentially being the tower puzzle that Michelle has won twice on Survivor, and through that, her team ends up winning here. Though interestingly, her team does contain both Kylan and James, obviously two of the bigger targets for the guy's side of things, keeping them safe, and despite the fact that Horacio gets voted in here as the very easy pick from the winning team, it does actually lead to more intrigue on the upcoming vote, as this essentially means that the majority of Alliance now has a turn on each other, with everyone in the minority either being safe or already in elimination. Here we get Norris being frustrated at Horacio's nomination, where we see her get into a little bit of a tiff with James, which again, nice petty drama to see here, but also we start to get some really overconfident content from Asaf, with Asaf and Jay talking about running the game, and Asaf saying that they're the good guys in the story, so I wonder what's gonna happen there. But either way, the vote ends up being between Ed and Emmanuel, which really makes you question, how did Corey get out of this? Or again, there was a point where Corey was this consensus target for everybody, yet at this point, he's somehow safe. Yet, Jay and Michelle here seem to be protecting Emmanuel, who James claims is his number two, which really comes out of nowhere. Again, literally never brought up before up to this point. But Kylan ends up targeting Emmanuel, with Olivia Norris joining him in this vote, creating this massive split in the majority group here, to where coming into the liberation, it did seem like it was going to be a tied vote to where we do get a pretty good nomination ceremony here where Kylan says that the people that are currently being targeted are expendable and this leads to this fight back from Michelle. But again, the vote does come down to a tie and really Kylan's side in this situation actually does have the upper hand where they really have nothing to lose from a stalemate. Where again, Horacio's already in so he has nothing to lose. Kylan already has immunity and the rest of his allies are women who can't be put in due to it being a male elimination day. So they have no real incentive to flip here and it does seem like Corey ends up realizing this and ends up burning his vote on the revote to avoid another tie, which I will say, the fact that they can burn their vote on the revote and not have the vote between the two nominees is kind of dumb, but and it seems like the vote is going to flip here until Ed ends up having the final vote, and here he ends up making a pretty interesting move of just burning a vote here to create another tie, which I do think is a dangerous move to be making here, as again, he is still technically vulnerable, and again, could have just guaranteed that Emmanuel goes in instead of potentially him, but consider Considering he does have a relationship with Emmanuel, and by doing this, it does gain in favor of Emmanuel, saving him from directly going in. I do think it's an interesting move to make here. Again, opening up the chance of someone that isn't as close of an ally to you potentially going in, as we do end up seeing. But I do feel like for me personally, this is probably a bit too cute of a move to be making here. One that again puts you in direct danger, especially in the instance where again it's not even a guarantee that Emmanuel will go home even if he was going in. He literally has essentially a 33% chance of actually being picked for the elimination. To where again, I do think this is a move that was probably unnecessary. No, an interesting move that Ed ends up pulling off here, but again, we get to the elimination where because it's a tie, we find out that there is no draw, and instead, CT comes out with chaos already. This being a fun entrance from CT, with him returning after a bit of a hiatus, and him openly talking about preparing himself for Challenge 40, and here he is able to pick anybody but James and Kylan, who obviously have immunity, which, again, pretty good for them, considering CT doesn't know who they are, and here we do see Michelle being worried for Jay, and the show does try to hype it up as if he's going to pick Jay, but he instead picks the only person he doesn't know here, that being Asaf, which is kind of funny considering he actually was on a season with Asaf, though again, Asaf was the first boot, so I guess he doesn't remember him, but anyway, here Jay is pissed and pushes Narisa away, where really it is really dumb that Jay gets really upset at Olivia and Narisa here for Asaf's elimination, saying that he went home because you didn't flip your votes in this situation, when it's like, you could have flipped your vote. Like, you're actually more incentivized to flip your vote because you're the ones potentially in danger. They're not. And again, it's a vote between two arbitrary people in Olivia and Narice's minds to where, to them, neither Ed or Emmanuel are at the top of any pecking order. And like, to Jay himself, Emmanuel is higher on the pecking order to where it really feels like Jay just kind of being a sore loser from him, one, losing a soft by the end of this episode, but also him not being able to convince them to do something that's in his own best interest. But anyway, elimination here ends up being a kind of 
dull one of them having to solve this math equation that uses prime numbers, though we do get this funny moment from a soft not knowing what a prime number is and having to ask other people for help with that. Though again, CT ends up winning here. So our soft ends up being really emotional on his way out, saying I'm sorry to his family. And we do see Kylan smirking during this, which might get referenced later on. And I will say, like, I did kind of feel bad for a soft on the way out, even though I didn't particularly like him on the season. But again, with that, let's talk about Sof, who again, like, I not particularly like how he played the game this season. I mean, the thing is, like, I feel like a lot of people were talking about him as if he was a dud on the show, and I don't really even think that. I actually think he actually made for some decent TV at points in this season. I think my issue with him is just the fact that he plays the game in a really boring way, and he sticks with the majority alliance and doesn't really detract from that. And beyond that, obviously, he is on a high horse at points. He's pretty indignant throughout the season, but I still find him to be somewhat entertaining at points where, again, I don't feel like he was a dud on this season, but he's also not someone I found particularly likable. But with that, we then get to episode 15, which starts off with a countdown coming up on the sign. Very clear that we're about to change phases in the game. But first, we have to have a lot of content back at the house where Jay is pissed off at Kylan, telling him, what kind of person are you? Being upset that he laughed at us off when he was crying about his family. And we later see him confronting Narice and Olivia, being upset how they couldn't make a decision, which again is all just this really negative content for him. And we also get him coming off pretty dumb as well, where he tells Michelle that they're safe because of me when it's pretty much the opposite. But it's also here where we get establishment of the relationship between Zara and Raven, talking about how they're the strongest women in the house and how they're aligning to keep each other safe. Where along with that, Raven gets personal content here, which all feels very tragic considering the end of this episode. But anyway, it gets us to the daily, where here we find out that we're now in the conquest phase of the game, where there's no more teammates. Taking us to an individual challenge, where they get dropped off in the middle of the water and have the paddle board to get a ring and then do a ring toss. Another kind of lame challenge, but TJ reveals that in this phase of the game, every challenge loser will be automatically purged, which obviously feels like this is acceleration of the game at this point, where again, like we're only five episodes from the finale and we still have 15 people left in the game. So obviously they need to expedite people leaving the game. And I actually don't mind people being purged at this point. I mean, while it sucks for people to get sniped out of the game in this way, I do feel like if we were going to have people being taken out of the game, I don't mind the way that they actually handle it here, where essentially for all three rounds of conquest here, each of these dailies lead to one person getting purged. Again, I like the it's formatted in that way. Again, it's very structured. It's not this like random thing of just randomly people are getting purged out of the game. I like that this is a thing that's told to them beforehand and just feels like a natural part of the format that again, I actually don't mind how they handle it here, even though I didn't love the results at points. But anyway, here we do have Narice and Mariah being worried about this challenge, talking about they're not the best swimmers, where who would have guessed that they're two that really struggle here. But in Narice's heat, though, we do see Raven somehow struggling even more to where Narice ends up passing her. To where Raven comes in last there, to where it was pretty clear that she was going home based on the editing of all this. But despite that, we do see Mariah also struggling to where she even rose in the wrong direction at a point. But again, we end up losing Raven, where I guess we just stop down and talk about her now. And obviously, I was very disappointed to lose Raven here. I feel like Raven was such a star on this season. I think she was definitely one of the big highlights of this season. To where, again, I didn't particularly agree agree with some of her rationale at points. I at least did feel like she, again, brought drama. She got into fights with people. She was a decent competitor, performed pretty well, won some pretty big eliminations, again, beat Laurel, and she was a pretty fun underdog for a lot of the season. Like, I really just feel like Raven brought a lot to this season, to where, again, seeing her getting sniped out of the game in this light was definitely disappointing. I feel like, again, that is one of the disappointments of this Purge format, is to see someone like her, who had such a big role on this season, getting taken out in a whimper here, but I do hope we see her at some point down the road, but but with that, let's get on the episode where the winners for the challenge ends up being between Kylan, Horacio, and Ed. With obviously a Kylan, Horacio win would have been this major shakeup for the game. Though, that obviously means we have to have an Ed win, which was the most boring option. For this is where we learn how the nominees will be determined, which is essentially through a safety chain. Where the bottom three in the chain end up going to a secret elimination, which in itself feels very reminiscent to how Fresh Meat was handled, which kind of felt like a cool throwback there. And I've always personally liked safety chains. And I was kind of interested in seeing how it would be handled here. And I do think it led to some decent drama, especially considering they did have a good amount of time to plot out how the chain would go to where, considering all the intermingling in the relationships, I do feel like we got some intrigue at points, though I think an underwhelming aspect of it is the fact that if Kylan and Horacio's alliance didn't get power, they're both just going to go into the elimination, which is kind of a lame aspect of all this. And even if they had gotten power, they wouldn't have been able to target their actual target as, again, even if they wanted 
had Jay out, Jay probably would have been saved along the chain anyway. But again, I still do like the mechanic of a safety chain, though again, I don't feel like it worked out the greatest on the season, though there definitely were some high points that we'll talk about. But anyway, here we do see Zara campaigning to Ed, trying to flip over Ed and keep her alliance safe, only for Ed to say he's not going to do that because they only saved me last time because they wanted to target Emmanuel, which is really a dumb explanation for it as they only had to save you last time because your own alliance was voting you in. Again, just very frustrating to see Ed just continuously ignore the fact that he's on the bottom of his alliance, but anyway, Jay does talk about how he wants Kylan, Horacio, and Zara going in, so I wonder who's going in, but does also create this plan to have Norris end up having the last pick so that she would be forced to expose who she's working with and actually make this go through. This would need James to have the save Norris instead of Zara, obviously a person that he's much closer to, to which, who would have guessed it? He does it because Mariah tells him to, which is really lame. But here we also get the reestablishment of the Norris Olivia relationship, as obviously it's going to matter for down the road, to where Norris does talk about still having her back despite her family telling her not to, which I wonder if that'll backfire on her. Anyway, we get to the selection where Ed ends up saving Emmanuel first, who ends up saving Berna and Colleen, who seem like a trio in the game at this point, who then saves Corey, who then saves Michelle, then Jay, then Mariah, then James, leading to James then saving Norris over Zara. Obviously this big shocker for Zara there. Obviously putting Norris in a very tough decision, having to pick between her closest allies to where we do have Horacio here saying don't save me, leading to Norris saving Olivia instead here. In essence, Horacio also helping Olivia out in this instance, which again, I'm sure will be repaid down the road. But with this, this does lead to Horacio, Kylan, and Zara being in the elimination. So right here we do see Zara ranting about James, saying that she now hates him, that she wrote about him in her journal, Probably the most trauma she brought all season. But either way, we learn about the Conquest Elimination, which ends up being essentially a mini final to a degree of them having a three-part obstacle course with puzzles at the end of them to where you could do them in any order. And here, the first two to finish this course ends up staying in the game. Only one person being eliminated here, something that does change in future rounds, which I assume was an aspect of the format they kept open in the case of too many people making it this deep into the game. I assume, again, this is their way to kind of fix that the number of people in the game could be very fluid based on what happened during the chaos phase. So I assume that they were going to eliminate people accordingly based on the numbers here. But anyway, Zara ends up being in the initial lead here, though we do see Horacio and Kylan really working together on the puzzles and then breezing by them there. Oh, well, Zara ends up struggling to get over some of the obstacles due to the fact that she went to the mud portion first, which makes her feet slippery, leading to her really losing her lead and Horacio and Kylan end up finishing first leading to Zara getting eliminated here. And Zara, again, was just a very frustrating player on this season. I do feel like she's someone that I was expecting probably a little bit more strategy from, especially the fact that she was on World Championship with Wes, and there was a lot of talk about how she's learning from Wes, only for her to not really utilize any of that on this season and kind of just play an extremely passive game of her not really fighting for her own allies earlier on in the game and then being frustrated at the end of the game that people aren't really fighting for her to where, again, I just felt like Zara is pretty indicative of some of the bigger issues of this season. The fact that just no one was willing to take this shot at this big majority. Despite the fact that she won so many dailies and had so many points where if she really, really fought, she probably could have tried to get something done. Though she just never did. And mixing that with the fact that, again, she's just kind of a boring personality as well. Where while she can have some funny one-liners here and there, it's simply just not enough to make her that riveting of TV. But she's obviously a very good competitor. I mean, she was probably the strongest female competitor on this season. But again, just someone that doesn't make for the best TV there. But with that, we then get to episode 16 where we do get some intrigue early on from the fact that Kylan and Horacio end up returning to the house though do create this plan to pretend like Kylan is the only one that came back taking advantage of this being a secret elimination which they don't know how the actual elimination played out to where we do get some fun from Olivia being devastated that Horacio got eliminated after him finally proving that he actually is a good friend and through that she talks about how she'll never go against him ever again only for that to only last like half an episode and again it's just funny how emotional everyone gets here only for Horacio to then return a few minutes later to where they proceed to lie about what happened in the elimination and we do see the majority alliance being frustrated at how
how they just can't get Horacio and Kylan out, with Jay saying that he needs to take matters into his own hands now, which I wonder what's gonna happen here then. And we do get some drama in this instance from Berna talking about how she was sad for Olivia and Norice about Horacio going home to where Kylan then picks a fight with her, saying that you could have made different decisions and says that none of her friends correct her on her attitude, so it's his job to do it. And again, this is a fun little fight from Kylan here. Some fun little drama for Kylan on his way out. Here, this does lead up to personal content from both Berna and Emmanuel, which was kind of boring, but they end up bonding over talking about their mothers, which ends up being pretty irrelevant to this episode, though I guess in a way is setting up Emmanuel's winner edit, something that they don't really do much of on this season. But anyway, we get to the daily, which was another kind of lame challenge of them having to slide down a rope and have to drop to the lowest point without falling into the water and having to do so in the quickest time, and, and just a very short challenge here. But again, another one where the person who does the worst here will end up being purged, essentially being the person that ends up dropping the slowest. But again, considering how lame the challenge is, it is really funny. This was also a sponsored challenge by Under Armour to where they're competing in Under Armour shoes, despite the fact that this challenge doesn't really have them using their feet that much. But either way, we do instantly see James fail here, meaning that as long as no one else end up falling, they would just automatically stay in the game and James would be purged. Or really, all they would have to do is just step off the platform and not even try and they would be safe. Though despite that, we see Ed going for the win here and ends up dropping with a pretty slow time, making it pretty clear that he was going to be purged from the game. Oh, we see Corey do a pretty risky strat following that of dropping really fast in an attempt to win, though ends up falling as well, though obviously he probably thought it would be fast enough no matter what to not get eliminated. But again, Jay here talks about being a rock climber and ends up winning here, with Olivia talking about how this is time to go into survival mode, which felt like clear setup there, but at the end of the day, obviously we do end up losing Ed here. And again, Ed was another really frustrating player on this season. And again, someone that, yes, he was in the majority for most of the season, but he was very clearly on the bottom of that majority and would have constant signs of him being on the bottom. He would just do nothing about it and would just think that he's completely safe. Like, he even talks about this on his way out, that he talks about how he played such an incredible social game and that he never faced elimination when it's like, you almost did with your own alliance voting you in. And the only reason you didn't get voted in is because the opposing alliance fought for you to stay. And despite that, you're still targeting them on your way out. Now, again, I actually like Ed on the show. I think Ed is actually a pretty fun personality and someone that, again, I would not be opposed to seeing back again just because, again, I do think he makes for good confessionals at points, but he's just someone that is so frustrating to watch with just how blindly loyal he is and how aloof he seems to be to his social standing in the game. But again, he is a very strong all-around competitor to where I would not be shocked to see him potentially win at some point down the road. But continuing on, I mean, with Jay winning the challenge here, we do get talk from him about how Michelle and Emmanuel are his top two and he wants to keep them both safe which does have him being somewhat opposed to what Michelle wants to do here, where Michelle wants to keep Olivia and Norris safe. They'll both end up wanting to target Horacio and Kylan, obviously, despite the fact that Jay tells Norris that he's done hunting, only for him to just go back on that instantly anyway, to where, again, the plan is to put in Horacio and Kylan, though there's a lot of talk about who that third person's going to be, where Michelle ends up wanting to put in Colleen here, though we do see them struggling on finding a way to make this occur, as no matter what, if you end up keeping Emmanuel safe, they'll keep Berna safe, which will eventually keep Colleen safe safe. Though also picking Olivia and Norris more than likely leads to them picking Kyla and Horacio, which again just leads to this being a pretty near impossible situation for this to occur, which does lead to a decent amount of drama here and them all disagreeing on how to approach this safety chain here. Now beyond this, we do get Norris finding out the fact that Jay is still going after Horacio and Kyla, or do you see her being really upset the fact that for some reason they're not going after Mariah and James, which again I assume James being kept around here simply because he isn't a threat. No, again, it is funny how far they let Mariah keep James in the game as a duo. But again, I assume it was just a situation where obviously Horacio and Kylan were looked at as much bigger threats than him. But anyway, we get to the selection where Jay ends up picking Michelle, who does end up saving Olivia here, making it seem like Norris, Horacio, and Kylan were about to be safe, only for her to then save Mariah, leading to this genius-like flashback showing Olivia making this deal to save herself in exchange for her saving Mariah following that. A pretty bad 
bad move from Olivia here. Obviously breaking her friendship with Narice and Horacio, who again went so far out of their way to save her just in the previous round, while also showing the others that she's not loyal and making the others aware of the fact that she's not someone to be trusted and be willing to throw her in. And also just a bad move for long term as well, to where again that's the thing with the challenge that your actions in one season can affect future seasons, to where I would not be shocked if coming in this challenge 40 that she has a bad reputation around her because of this move. Or again, I just think this was a terrible move from her pretty much in almost every single way. Especially when she could have just made this deal and then went back on it. And I think that would even be less blowback than what she got through actually going through with this deal. Where I think if she made this deal and then still saved Narice here, I think most people would obviously be annoyed, but would be understanding of that decision and would be more so upset with themselves at how dumb they were to allow this to happen. While otherwise here, again, it really just paints this negative tint over Olivia. I just thought it was a really terrible move there. But still, the plans still seem to be to try to get Colleen into elimination but it does end up going wrong here with them dumbly thinking that Berna would save Corey over Colleen, at least in a Reese, accidentally going into elimination here. Having Jay openly say that he's upset that the person he's protecting the most outside of Michelle is going in. Really, one, exposing the fact that Michelle and Narice are his two closest people that he wants to save, but even beyond that, also exposing that he wanted Colleen to go in in the process. Again, really just being dumb that he's very openly talking about his alliance structure here. Again, we get some little drama here from Narice telling Berna to shut up and that she'll pop her in the face. While also confronting Olivia for saving Mariah before her, to which we do finally get TJ backing up Narice in this instance, where TJ's clear love of Narice across this episode was pretty humorous to me, though we do get this pretty emotional farewell for Horacio and Narice, with him being emotional over having felt like he dragged her down with him, which I mean, he kind of did, but again, I felt like that was a pretty sympathetic moment. And along with that, we also get Jay apologizing to Narice and showing her his list of how he thought the chain was going to play out, saying that he was always protecting her despite her never being with him, which kind of just felt like him trying to portray himself as the good guy once again. But oh yeah, we get to the elimination where TJ announces that two people are going home here. Only the winner will end up returning to the house, which really makes this a pretty big death's row here of really feeling like this complete demolition of this minority alliance where whoever was coming back was pretty much coming back with almost no allies. But anyway, it ends up being essentially the same elimination as last time, just swapping out the puzzles where again you would expect Horacio to dominate this like he did last time though he ends up really struggling on the first puzzle where he even ends up wasting time going to the other puzzles before finishing it and then trying to return to it later which I did feel like was a questionable move as no matter what you would have finished this puzzle anyway so I don't know why you're wasting that time there. Though beyond that Kylan also ends up struggling at the same puzzle leading to Narice getting this pretty massive lead to where while she does struggle at the last checkpoint he does end up eventually getting it and shockingly wins here. Again being this very impressive win for Narice of her getting this great great moment of beating two of the biggest threats in the game and Horacio and Kylan and we have like TJ also like rooting her on in this instance being so excited for her when she wins which again I thought was a nice moment there as well but beyond that we do actually end the episode with us seeing Narice return to the house and us showing this montage of her relation with Olivia really setting up this big drama for the following episode which and while I typically don't like cliffhangers like this I do feel like this was a pretty effective one considering we still got the resolution that we would typically get in Horacio and Kylan being eliminated but this just was more so setting up what was going to go down in the next episode. But either way, with that, we obviously lose Horacio and Kylan. So we'll talk about both of them here, starting it off with Horacio, who I'm kind of conflicted on his run in the season. Really, I feel like early on, he was kind of frustrating. The fact that, again, he was kind of just playing too passively, wasn't really doing much in the game, and was making some dumb strategic moves at points, was not really seeming to talk with many people in the house. Though, I think as the season went along, he obviously becomes more of this underdog figure, where I think he became a lot more rootable towards the end. I was really like his relation with Narice, and again, overall, like, I felt like he was fine by the end. He's also obviously one of the best challenge competitors we've still probably ever seen to where, again, he still won a decent amount of challenges this season, came in second in a lot of them. He still is someone that I would very much expect to win the challenge if he were to continue competing down the road, and personally, I don't mind them bringing him back until that point, to where, while again, I don't find him to be the most entertaining member of this cast, I did feel like he was at least rootable enough to where I wouldn't be opposed to seeing him again. And then, let's talk about Kylan, who I think was just an incredible casting choice on this season. We're kind of someone that I've always wanted to be on the challenge. I mean, even just immediately after BB23, I was really, really wanting him to be on, and he was obviously on USA, and he was kind of a mixed bag on that season. I thought he was pretty good, but probably not as messy as I was expecting him to be. And I feel 
feel like this season kind of paid off what I was expecting from him on the challenge. Now, I probably was expecting a little bit more mess, but still, I do think he was someone that, again, like when he was in the minority, I think he plays the game in a really interesting way. Again, we see him really build up this resistance to Jay's alliance I thought was really interesting. And we see him being very confrontational. We see him win a whole bunch of challenges. Again, he won a whole bunch of eliminations. And I think there's a lot to like from Kylan's run in this season where he's not one that I would love to see back down the road, but I think genuinely I would love to see him become a true staple of the show moving forward where I do think he has a lot to bring to the challenge to where again, I think he 100% is one of the bigger stars of this season. And we get to episode 17 where obviously we see the reaction to Norris returning with most people celebrating obviously and the fact that Kylan and Horacio are gone. Though we do see Norris being clearly annoyed at pretty much everybody and decides to not tell them about the elimination. Obviously something that works to her favor as she comes into the following round being the only person to know what the elimination is. But following this, we do get a lot of focus on the Norris-Olivia dynamic, obviously, with Jay talking about how dumb it was for Olivia to throw Norris in, because obviously he would never do that. But really throughout this episode, Olivia strangely comes off as pretty sympathetic towards Norris, which was surprising considering obviously their very hostile relationship after the show. But we do see Michelle trying to repair their relationship, and along that, Michelle also gets content showing her relationship with Berna, meaning Berna is back on the show, which I wonder why. I would have guessed we get to the daily where there's an endurance challenge or having the bounce on a barrel and who would have guessed it? Berna wins. Oh, well, the first five to drop end up going to the loser's bracket where the person that gets purged is determined. And here we do get some pretty dramatic editing and some over-the-top music playing with us also getting a lot of slow-mo. And what do you know? Michelle ends up losing her footing almost right away. And despite hanging on to rope with just her arms for quite a while, she does eventually drop. Again, being proud though is this big emotional moment with Mariah and Jay both getting emotional here. And to be fair, I mean, I do feel like that weight was definitely felt on this season in the sense that obviously just everyone loved Michelle on the season and she was in this like really dominant position and really it felt like she was primed to just easily make the final had she not been purged here to where and it does very much feel like she was sniped out of the game here or at least the show gave respect to that but either way again with that we do lose Michelle and again Michelle was pretty much the main character of this season I mean she got so many confessionals really an unprecedented amount of confessionals where it feels very clear from this season that producers do look at Michelle as one of the new faces of the show moving forward and again, beyond that I mean she played a pretty great game. I mean, she really dominated this game from beginning to end. I mean, having a lot of control over the majority alliance. And while there's points where, again, she didn't necessarily get her way, she was just simply never in danger. And she had so many allies coming in this season where, done that, again, she really managed her allies pretty well. It seems like she's the more rational mind between her and Jay and her and Berna and was able to keep some other people in line to where, again, like, I do feel like Michelle played an incredible game on this season. And straight up, I do think it's a shame that she did get purged here. Where while I don't think she was poised to win, I do think her at least making the final is something that would have been a great outcome for her on this season considering it's probably not very likely that she'll make the final in most given seasons considering the target that's on her back but beyond this we do see Corey and colleen talking about how michelle leaving is actually good for them with colleen saying that she was waiting for time to make the move but sometimes problems solve themselves aka you just sucked and you were just waiting for luck to help you out but either way narisa and olivia actually seem to be working together at this point in the game and you talk about wanting to make it an all-girl final despite not liking berna which, what do you know? Berna doesn't go through with because she's Berna. And instead, Berna campaigns against Norris here, telling Jay about her wanting this all-girl final, which really ends up burning this relationship between Jay and Norris. Now, finally, following this, we do also have this added segment of Colleen throwing Norris under the bus, saying that she was targeting him earlier, which wasn't really the case, where in that situation, she was more so just expressing her doubt in Jay, more so than targeting her, even going out of her way to not vote for Jay in that round. All while Colleen actually was considering flipping at least from what we were shown so again this did feel like a fully false claim and kind of a ridiculous one for colleen to be making of all people and trip like i don't think colleen is lying in this instance i do think colleen truly believes that narice was considering going against jay but i think it's just a moment that she interpreted differently than what was intended though again this moment in particular narice wanting an all-girl final is essentially her indirectly coming for jay where obviously it's not necessarily her saying that, oh i'm going for jay but it is her saying that she wants to go 
at the end with a group that doesn't include Jay. So I do understand why Jay becomes anti-Norisa at this point, but I do feel like the show really focused a lot more on the Colleen situation, where that part of it didn't make as much sense. But anyway, all this obviously sets up Jay for having the final decision on who to save between Mariah, Olivia, and Norris, with obviously this causing him to eventually side with Mariah. Though, this is where we see Jay telling Norris that he isn't picking her and telling her what Colleen said, leading to Norris obviously being pissed off at Jay, but also going to Colleen and calling her a fake-ass bitch. Which is funny that the show even backs Norris up in this situation, flashing back to Colleen, plotting against Jay. And we do have Olivia sticking up for Norris here to Jay, saying that it's so fucked up that he's doing this. And again, just in general, really funny to see the way that Olivia was portrayed considering the dissolution of their relationship. But anyway, we get to the selection where Jay makes the final decision to save Mariah, to where even DJ in this situation is calling out Jay. Or Norris, I mean, to fair, is on a bit of a high horse, saying that like loyalty and integrity doesn't mean much to people. Though we do have DJ calling out Jay for having previously cried for Norris and now not saving her. And we do get this bickering between Jay and Norris here, with Norris saying that she's not going to kiss ass, which again, really great content from Norris there. And that's followed up by the elimination, where we do have James, Olivia, and Norris in the elimination, which again, same elimination as last time, just different puzzles. The two people will be going home here as well. And right away, we do see Olivia being stuck on her first puzzle and never even getting past that. All while James does have an initial lead, though, also ends up struggling on that same slide puzzle to where Norris ends up really just dominating this challenge, having this massive lead from the first puzzle on and ends up easily winning here. Again, another really impressive win for her on the show. And the show really ends up hyping up her win with TJ also calling her the Dragon Slayer, which I did find funny. But the episode doesn't end there where we do also return to the house to see Norris tell the others what happened, where it is funny to see a like really happy Norris tell Mariah that it's only me, obviously indicating that James got eliminated there. And then we do proceed to have a weird party segment that's literally just these slow-mo shots of the players partying, only for us to get TJ arriving at the party as the cliffhanger for the episode, because I definitely care so much. But again, with that, let's talk about the eliminated players before we move on. Starting it off with James, and James was someone that I was actually okay with being on this season. I mean, James was someone that, again, I felt bad for him and how he went out in Challenge UK, and I thought him coming back here again, at least he could get some redemption into very kind of does, but also he revealed that he's such a boring TV presence that I have no interest in ever seeing him again. So again, it was just very frustrating to see how he played the game, playing very passively, just allowing the majority alliance to maintain control despite there being opportunities for him to finally flip the game. He just simply followed Mariah and didn't really do much outside that. And really just as a whole, I think he came off as a massive disappointment to me to where again, no interest in ever seeing him again. And beyond that, we do then have Olivia, who I think Olivia's run this season is a bit strange. Obviously, she's someone that was this big character the previous season and did have a lot to live up to on this season. And to be fair, by the end of it, I do think she definitely continues that impact that she had, though obviously comes off in a lot more negative of a way. I mean, she definitely comes off as pretty judgy and jealous at points throughout this season, but I mean, she's still an entertaining presence. I still feel like she's someone that is kind of perfectly suited out for the challenge or someone that's like physical enough where they'll probably make it deep in most seasons. Again, pretty good socially, pretty messy strategically to where, again, I wouldn't mind if Olivia does continue to be on the show from this point forward as, again, I do think she brings decent TV at points, even though again, I don't necessarily agree with how she acted at points in the season. But we get to episode 18 where TJ reveals that they all made the final, and that's it. This is where Norris does say that no one else has had to prove themselves. It's kind of clicking in my mind that yeah, she's the only person in this entire final to have previously gone to elimination, which is actually a pretty insane stat. It really just shows you the stagnation of this game, which was very frustrating and that the same people were going in over and over and over again, but straight up, I mean, the bulk of this episode was just really boring. I mean, in the lead up to the final, we do see them getting dinner and get these dragged out recaps of their games, which they do again right before the start of the final with TJ propping them up, which is just, again, wasting time. And we also get, like, letters from home, which is, like, boring. Why are we getting this on the show? To where, again, we get this, like, weird portrayal of Emmanuel with him getting a letter from his girlfriend, the girlfriend he cheated on, and says that he realizes now that she's too perfect and he's gonna win this for her which is like okay I guess anyway we get to the final which is comprised of three phases who would have guessed it we're starting to control phase with everyone being tied together and have to 
first drank a tuna shake for some reason. Again, that was a waste and just felt like the producers being obsessed with seeing people puking. But we have them having to find chests in different colored ropes and create a pattern. And again, a really boring challenge. But there was a little intrigue from the fact that one person had to carry more ropes with Corey volunteering for that. Only for him to mess it up for the entire team with him having dropped the rope at the beginning and having to go back, losing them the challenge, to which in failing, it means that they lose $16,000 from the prize pot for some reason. Literally just feels like the producers just picking a number just to make the final prize money a even number, which is also really funny too, because then the money that gets taken away here is from the second and third place prizes only, where first place still gets the same amount of money. So again, all this is very strange. But again, we end this phase with elimination, which obviously functions in the same way as the control phase of the game, where they voted in one player, and that player getting to drag someone to elimination with them, and the vote ends up being between Norris and Corey, with Corey getting voted in here for messing up the challenge, where despite there already being enough votes on Corey, by the time we get to the last few votes, Emmanuel and Colleen still end up voting for Norris for some reason, which just felt weird, especially because then Corey himself ends up voting himself in, so again, just strange. But Corey here ends up picking Jay, which was a bit of a shock here in the fact that obviously Jay had been shown to be running the game throughout the entire season and for Corey to now directly come for him Dre says that he's targeting him because he's sketchy and wants anyone else to win but Jay as he used and abused the players in the house which I mean where was this moral high ground earlier in the season I mean this definitely could have been needed obviously I get it in the fact that obviously Jay was protected by Michelle and Corey had the connection to Michelle and want to navigate through the game though again like this would have been a much better season if people were doing stuff like this earlier on but anyway the challenge itself ends up being a pretty neutral one as it obviously could be one where different genders are participating in though at the same time it is one where there is a pretty physical portion at the beginning where you have to run out and collect your puzzle pieces though after that, it's just a basic stacking challenge but Corey ends up easily winning here with Jay going out pretty anticlimatically where again it just kind of felt like this went by super quick and considering the fact that Jay ran this season it does feel weird that he just gets sent off in a bit of a whimper here but again, with that we do lose Jay and Jay is someone that again like I very much like coming into the season I thought he was a fun scrappy underdog in the previous seasons this season his portrayal was obviously the complete opposite again he was this dominating figure that ran the entire game and came off very unlikable I mean the fact that he was on this massive high ground for a lot of the season and seemed to take the game so personally and use these very personal tactics against people and trying to actually ruin their relationships again like it was just not a good look for him but I will still say again it brought a lot to this season I do feel like Jay ends up being this really unlikable villain on this season to the point where again I think he definitely brought entertainment to the season it brought this figure that you wanted to be taken down at some point in the season I do think his heel turn on this season definitely added a lot to the season but with Jay out of the game we now have the game going to the chaos phase where we have five checkpoints here in rotating pairs where individual time matters obviously a very similar format we've seen from recent all-star seasons but here we get a lot of focus on Berna with her really struggling and letting most of her partners down the where we see her finishing last in the first checkpoint with Mariah all on the Reese ends up talking about how she knows she's the target while Manuel talks about needing her to not win so I wonder what's gonna happen here where Manuel ends up winning almost every leg during this phase and just straight up I mean the checkpoints themselves were just pretty boring here and also really unbalanced where I definitely felt like what partner you had at what points definitely gave you a pretty big advantage where the first one ends up being a really physical one of you having to untangle this heavy rope and push this cage across the finish line the second one ends up being less physical and the fact that you just have to paddle out and find TJ where again Emmanuel being paired up with Berna in that challenge was obviously very lucky for him checkpoint three ends up finally being a redo of the previous mini final the where again it's just kind of funny how lazy they were and the fact that they just literally reused the same challenge once again checkpoint four ends up being gross food eating obviously though i will say there was a funny moment through this of Corey puking and mariah yelling at him that you're puking too loud and we see tj hysterically laughing in the background which all that was really fun the final checkpoint here ends up having them rolling a ball down a track which was kind of lame but again a Emmanuel easily wins this portion of 
the final, and we do find out that there will be another elimination, obviously, with him having the choice of who to throw in, to which we end the episode on a cliffhanger, because this is obviously so suspenseful, and I definitely care about what's gonna happen here. Anyway, we get to the finale, where Emmanuel votes in Norris obviously. But here we do get the draw where Norris has to pick between the four other names with two chaos clubs, which would allow her to pick anybody, but none of that matters as she picks Mariah. And all this is just really rushed on the show, where we get no setup to this elimination at all. We just get Norris and Mariah in this elimination here. That's this puzzle that we just get this long, boring montage of them just moving pieces around with no real suspense here. And Norris ends up winning this. Mariah is taken out. Again, really just anticlimactic and how all this is set up where kind of just felt like the editor's kind of giving up at this point and just trying to rush through this even though there's no real content for the rest of the episode anyway but with that we lose a Mariah and I mean to me Mariah is probably the most baseline challenge competitor that could possibly exist in the sense that and she's decent physically to where I think most times she's going to make it pretty close to a final she is not interesting TV wise but on both first seasons she has become somewhat prominent fixtures on the show through again her first time her really rocky relationship with Fessy and her second time with again her relationship with James it has her like seeming to find these storylines to put her on the show even though she's not the most interesting personality in the world and straight up like Mariah is someone that I could take her leave moving forward I mean if she comes back I think it's fine she's someone that I would rather have back than certain other people but she's also not someone I'm really excited to have back either i mean she just seems to be a largely affable presence on the challenge but again one that doesn't bring too much excitement along with her but then we get the rest of the final which was just boring where we get the reveal no one is sleeping tonight because i definitely care where we get this montage of people being upset at tj for not letting them sleep it's like who cares but either way they have to get tiles out of a cage like in the og challenge from episode zero so once they do they can get these supplies that will let them sleep so it's like okay i guess they can sleep anyway Anyway, and the top two here get to sabotage others, but again, who cares? This didn't matter. This was a waste of time. Anyway, TJ arrives in the morning where we get the conquest portion of the final, aka a normal final, where they have to swim to an island and do three trek points, where Emmanuel's in the initial lead and really just never lets up from that point on, which was just disappointing. <laughs> anyway, checkpoint one has them having to rappel down a cliff and run to a puzzle they have to solve, but before they do so, they have to drink the tuna shake again again because guess they made too many of them but we do see Berna here struggling with it once again because she's Berna to where she ends up being the last to finish the entire final which wasn't shocking all while we do see Corey say that he can't do it and it's his time to rappel down the cliff being scared of getting stuck which I don't really even get how I mean obviously it's a phobia but like as someone that is scared of heights I do feel like this didn't seem that bad where and you're going down a slope it's not like you're going straight down it's been more intimidating heights on this season than this but anyway here we do get this humorous moment of tj just mocking him and saying it's a baby hill and get your ass up there and proceeds to like push him towards the edge but really outside of all that it was just kind of a boring sequence and we get to checkpoint two which is also just really boring them diving underwater and copying a puzzle key it's like who cares and we get to the final checkpoint which is just a redo of the conquest elimination where we would hope that a race would be able to catch up here considering her winning this twice in the past and we do see Emmanuel really struggling on the Sudoku portion that ends up slowing him down to where we do get to a point where everyone seemed to be on their final flag at the same time though Emmanuel still leaves in first and easily wins which just sucks all while we get Norris coming in second and then we get this very lengthy sequence of who's gonna get third between Colleen and Corey because only third gets money which I don't care about again Corey ends up struggling on the balance beam to where Colleen ends up beating him which too fair is kind of a sucky way to lose out on $30,000 from Corey's end. But anyway, overall, just an underwhelming ending to the season. To me, I just feel like this season would have been a lot better had Norris won this season. I think her being this massive underdog in the end portions of the season, going on to win in a situation where I had no faith in Norris coming into this season, to where she really shocked me coming into this season. Again, like I think that would have been a fantastic conclusion to the season. But no, we get the most boring, unlikable winner we could have possibly gotten. One that I don't even know if we're going to see him ever get on the challenge. I didn't get the sense the production loved him on this season. So again, for this to be a season that was attempting to create this new face of the challenge and for that person to be Emmanuel was just a very lackluster ending here that kind of does sour parts of my opinions of this season but again with that we'll still run through the finalists talking about my opinions on them starting it off 
with Berna. And I don't particularly like Berna. Now, I will say in comparison to some of the other people that made the final, at least Berna brought kind of entertainment to their show. I mean, she was someone that was irrational and would have these constant meltdowns that, again, made for decent TV at points, even though, again, they were also just kind of annoying because it's Berna. I don't personally like Berna on the show. I would rather her not be on a season, but to be fair, I would rather have her on than a couple other people. And the fact that, again, at least she brings something to the show, but that something is something that I don't really want. Anyway, we then get to Corey, who I do like Corey. Corey is someone that I would like to become a main state moving forward. I feel like Corey, while again, he did play the game in kind of a boring way by the back half of this season, I do feel like he still kind of has everything you would want from a challenge competitor. He is pretty physical to where, again, I think he could win a final at some point down the road. He's someone that is bringing drama at points. Again, he's not afraid to get into fights, and he also plays the game pretty hard. Now, again, I did not love his strategy on this season of kind of just falling back and towering to the likes of Michelle and Jay, but again, early on the season, he was causing a lot of drama there made some moves that pissed off his alliance and even in his attempts to get back with his alliance he had some pretty bold plays as well the where again i thought Corey had a good role on this season he's someone that i would like to see back moving forward next up moving on to colleen and colleen also just kind of exists i mean colleen's a weird figure on this season to me and the fact that it felt like her edit was one that was setting up her eventually making this big move only for that big move to never happen and through that i think it makes this run for her even more disappointing it just feels like she was just there with not much to really do. Now, again, she didn't come off as unlikable. At least there's that. I actually like Colleen for whatever that's worth. I just don't think she makes for good TV. To where, again, I don't need to see Colleen ever again. I don't feel like she brings much to the challenge of the show. Now, she is a decent competitor. I mean, I will give her a credit in that. Again, she came in third in this. I would not be shocked if she somehow makes it deep into a season once again if she does return. But again, she's just not someone I need to see again. I just don't feel like she really brings much. With her kind of just being all talk about being this mole but not really having much actual gain to her. But then we get to Nerese, and Nerese is the star of the season. I think as time goes on, this will be remembered as Nerese's season. I think she is the person that had the biggest role on the season by the end of it. She is someone that really just hogged up all the screen time in the back third of the season, and rightfully so. I think her arc on this season is fantastic. I love her starting off in this big majority group, only to find herself on the bottom and then work her way out of that and come so close to winning in what was a pretty unfair final. For this to be a final with no gender boundaries, it did feel like this was one that obviously was very catered towards the men with there being just so much running and swimming involved to where while there were a lot of puzzles along the way that try to equalize it, I just feel like it was not enough to where Emmanuel obviously had a massive advantage. Dragon, the fact that Nerese even came relatively close, I think is impressive. Like, Nerese very much impressed me on this season. I did not expect Nerese to be this good of a competitor. Like, obviously, we saw her on Ride or Dies, and she was decent there. I mean, she helped Nelson win his first daily in forever. Like, obviously, she is a decent competitor, but I did not expect her to be a near winner of this season. And just in every single way, Nerese surprised me on this season to where, mixing out in the fact that she was the star of the season, again, I feel like she is someone that needs to return moving forward. I feel like she's someone that could easily be the new face of the challenge. She's able to follow up on these appearances to where, to me, she is someone that really brings everything you would want from a challenge point of view to where I definitely come out of the season looking at Norris very highly. And finally, let's talk about the winner and Emmanuel. And Emmanuel sucks. I really don't like him in really any facet of anything. I don't feel like there's a single thing about Emmanuel that I like on this season. He's straight up boring and I felt like he was boring his first time around. He also just didn't do anything anything on this season outside of build this really good bond with Jay that kept him around and he didn't really do anything physically throughout the season either he didn't win that many challenges he never went to elimination he won this final in a situation where again it was very much catered to him especially at the fact that by the time of the final portion of the final he didn't have anyone there that should have been competition to him where probably jay would have been the biggest competition for him and he went out before this portion of the final to where i really do not find emmanuel's win on this season impressive he played the game in the most boring way possible and while again yes you can credit him for the social bonds he made on the show of the challenge Again, this is not Survivor. This is not Big Brother. This is a show that is based around physical challenges to where for him to not really impress in any facet of that until the final in a situation where it just greatly benefited him due to him having no real competition. I just do not find this win impressive. Even though, again, I think Emmanuel is a solid challenge competitor. I think most times he plays, he will get pretty far. But I don't think he's up there with the true elites of the show. And and again, it's just such a lackluster winner for this season where I felt like even the producers did 
did not like that he won this season. They did not even give him that much content throughout this season. He was by far the most under-edited person across this season, where even the likes of Colleen got more content than him. So I just feel like he's a lackluster winner on all fronts, to where, again, I just felt like it was such a disappointment to see him actually pull it out here. But anyway, that's it for the challenge. Battle for a new champion, a season that... I think it was okay. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, there's a lot bad about this season. Again, a terrible outcome. You have a really terrible format and definitely certain cast members that brought nothing to the table, but there were also some cast members that did bring a lot to the table. Again, you got Narice's underdog run. You got Kylan's underdog run. And you have Melissa and Big T causing a lot of drama early on. I think it was interesting to see Michelle run the game. Jay was this big villain, which was this interesting heel turn. And Raven very much surprised me. Again, there were definitely things to like about this season. The problem is that that simply came from the cast, and I feel like production did nothing to improve the season outside that again i think the format is terrible the editing was terrible the overly serious tone is terrible to a while again it did feel like we were getting this sense of older school challenge a bit back with there being this more messy drama happening to me it's not enough to make this an actual good challenge season just due to the fact that production doesn't seem to know what they're doing with the challenge and are trying to make the show something that it's not, which is also just a not as interesting show, which I don't even think anyone even wants it to become the super serious sport show that it seems like production is wanting it to be. So I just don't know what they're doing. But again, I do feel like this season at least had sprinkles of good content to where I do think it's better than the last few mainline seasons. I think it's the best season since Total Madness, but really that's not saying much considering how lackluster I feel like those seasons are. But anyway, that's my review of Challenge Battle for a New Champion. Now, obviously this is coming out a bit late where I did have my Big Brother rankings to get out first. But with that out of the way, Trader Season 2 is about to end. I do have my review of that coming out pretty soon. Beyond that, I mean, obviously we have BB Can, we have Survivor going on, Amazing Race is going to start. So I'll be doing videos on all of those. I mean, we'll get All Stars 4 eventually and I intend on doing a review of that as well. The where And stay tuned for all those things and obviously this typical content you can expect from the channel but for now that is the video thank you for watching